I remember when I was a kid, a man told me, he's like, Grant, patience is a virtue. And I looked at him and said, are you trying to get a head start on me? Because that's what it sounds like. That reminds me of how many people say money won't make you happy. Rich people aren't happy. Why is this whole rich topic so sensitive to so many people? Why is it so many people, the moment you say rich, wealthy, get rich, get wealthy, you get all this negativity around being rich. Rich people aren't happy. Rich people are dysfunctional. Rich people are greedy. Rich people are selfish. You've heard all that. Money won't make you happy? Why all the disdain? Why the hate? Why the criticism for the wealthy? I'm not talking about people that inherited their money. I'm talking about people that worked from nothing and created an empire and created true wealth that you can't possibly get rid of in a lifetime. People that will actually create so much wealth, they'll leave it for generations to come. The DuPonts, the Fords, the Carnegies. Bad people or did they do something really big? Look, when I talk about getting rich, I'm talking about you rat tapping into your full potential, not just financially, but in all areas of your life. My family, I'm rich. My company, I'm rich. My finances, I'm rich. My other businesses are rich, not just because they have money, but because they're rich in ideas, rich in great people, rich in energy, resources, and creativity. And if you don't want to get rich, please don't blame other people that want to. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because in my first business, I quit on my business partner. I was making 300 bucks a month, and I didn't have the motivation to keep going. And the thing that got me through was studying the stories of entrepreneurs who've had massive success. And I hope that in sharing these stories with you, you find a motivation to keep going. And if I'm being honest, I still need the stories for myself today, too. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Grant Cardone, and get some incredible motivation. Enjoy. Whoever is most certain wins the sales game. Okay, you wanna write this down. It is not about trust, it is about certainty. Whoever is most certain wins the sales game. Certainty wins the sales game. If he's certain he's not gonna do it, he ain't gonna do it. If I'm certain he is gonna do it, certainty wins the game. Whoever's most certain wins the game. Elena was less certain about marrying me than I was certain about her marrying me. Had nothing to do with love. Okay, you don't need love to close the deal. You need certainty. Half of the people that have done business with me said they would never do business with me. Half the people that follow me today did not like me when they first saw me. One, one of the number one comments we get is, man, the first time I saw one of your videos, I hated your guts. I keep showing up, they changed their mind. How many of you know this saying? You can never change a bad first impression. How many know that saying? It's completely not true. Some of my best customers have come from bad first impressions. I can't control a first impression. Some of you came in the room and didn't like me today when you walked in here. Nothing to do with me, it's about you having a bad day. Okay, now let me flip the page and give you a little certainty. You see how you wrote it down? This is how I would write it down. Number one, you greet the customer. Number two, you qualify the customer. You greet, hey! That's how long a greeting takes, by the way. If you spend more than two seconds on a greeting, Thomas, great to have you here, appreciate you coming. That's it. It's not about the weather, it's not about politics. People spend so much time in the greeting. Let's build rapport. Rapport is in the second step, in the qualification. How can I help your company? Make him more money, that's what he said. I need to remember that. The qualification process is designed to figure out what to show him and how to close it. This is a rapport building step. I'm taking interest in why he's here. Why do people buy things? Solve a problem. That's the only reason anybody on the planet ever buys any product. To solve a problem. Demonstrate the product, make a proposal, close, follow up. Those are six steps. What are they? Greet, qualify, demonstrate, propose, close, follow up. Did I miss anything? Everybody try this. Greet. greet. Number one, greet. greet. Number one, greet. greet. Number two, qualify. qualify. Three, demonstrate. demonstrate. Four, make a proposal. Make a proposal. Make a proposal. Number five, close the deal. Follow up. That's it, man. Look, if you can't remember them, you can't do them. If you got $1,000, I would like just keep, you know, keep investing in yourself until you got another 1000 Okay. And and then invest in yourself. You know now now you got two thousand investing. You go go go. You should start making money faster. Mm -hmm. At some point, you should start like every time you make an investment in yourself. If I put fuel in my car, it's supposed to take me further. Right. Right. So if I invest in myself, then and look. You know, there's things I bought that I didn't get a return on right away. 
but I didn't quit investing in a course or a workshop or training or education mm -hmm. because it didn't work. Or your health or- I spent anything. 17 years going to school. None of it was any good for me. Mm -hmm. But it did teach me, <laughs> it did teach me how to go to school. Right. You know? How to study. How to study, how to go there, how to finish, how to complete a course. Like I, I completed college. I think you just got to keep investing in you until like, oh, oh now I'm making $3,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, boom, reinvest all that again. But what we do is we start taking it off the table, right? And we save it. We don't invest it. So I think people just need to get on that that cycle of like, okay, I'm going to keep repeating this activity. I'm going to reinvest some money in myself, go to the workshop or whatever. Mm -hmm. Monday, I got to be hustling again until, okay, now I got $4,000. Okay, now I got 5000 Now the income's starting to pick up. Income has to pick up. In The income should be an indication that whatever you're learning is helping you. That's interesting. Until one day you're like, okay, I have more money here than I can actually invest in myself. I can't, I, like, there's nothing I can go to right. to get rid of this money. You need to get rid of that money, though. If I did it all over again today, I would, the first thing I would learn today is the money game. I believe this is the single most important thing your staff can learn, your executives can learn. Uh, your, your financial person, your CEO. By the way, the person, your CFO, your, your chief financial officer, they don't even know anything about finances. What they, actually, actually, let me change that. It's not that they don't know anything about finances. What they know is actually one of the people holding you back. Uh, the uh, KPI, the return, the met, we're not getting a ROI on this investment. The return on investment is terrible. This is not a good return. You know, like, like you, you got to understand, they're counting money. They're not creating it, right? So our expenses are too high. We need to reduce our expenses and we pay salespeople too much money. In our, in our company, number one most important protected group in the company is the sales team. I'm like, we gonna overpay anybody? If we overpay anybody, it is the guy and the gal that is going out bringing in the kill. That's right. Okay, so the income line, man, this money thing, this money game, this is, this is how a financial statement works. Income, expenses, net, okay? I, I screwed the whole deal up. I spent more time on this line than I did on this line. How many of you know people do this? Reduce the expenses, reduce the expenses, reduce the expenses, reduce the expenses. How low can you go to zero? How high can you fly? See, I can take this number to infinity. I can only take this number to zero. Everybody agree? So I spend today 95% of my time on income and less than 5% of my time on expenses. So your, your, your financial officer is spending all their time on what? Oh, uh, this expense and that expense and where this went and where that went. Uh, I saw Brandon the other night, we went to dinner with Brandon and some of his clients, some of his very, very special elite clients. And um, we were having dinner and, and, and Brandon, when the bill came, and Brandon picked up the bill and, and, and he took a picture of it. I said, well, why are you taking a picture of it? Well, to send this to, the, to whoever collects history. Because once it's an expense, it's history. Everybody agree? Now, have you ever gotten rich off of history? And that's what accountants do. They record history, something that was done. Where's your, where's your future gonna come from? Income is the future. Right? So I spend 95% of my time on two things, marketing and income. And if I spend too much, big deal. I'm going to go find, this is the solution to all my problems, marketing and income. Everybody agree? I'm going to go expand Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Google. Dude, they don't worry about their expenses. They're like, how much can we spend? How many people can we hire? How big can we get? How long can we bleed? and one day we'll own the world. A lot of people don't get who I am because, you know, because I'm brash and I'm bodacious and I do, and I probably just say things wrong. And I don't, I don't really think through how I'm gonna say something, I just say it and then let it, the chips fall where they fall. But 
I want the people around me doing well. Like, I don't want to, I'm not the guy, I'm, I'm here by myself today, but most of the time I'm rolling with a crew. I want them all doing well. I want those guys making money. I don't want people suffering around me. I want people, I know that when we go someplace, they want to pay the bill too. When the, wine, the, when the wine list comes out, I know the guys I work with are like, hey Grant, whatever, whatever you want, bro, just get it on me. Everybody wants to pay that big check. So, I think, I, I, you know, the way to 10X is to make sure you're doing well and 10 other people, mm -hmm. nine other people are doing well. Mm -hmm. That's a big 10X. You know, you fix your house and nine other houses on the street. Or you don't fix the houses. You, you, you get the neighborhood in a condition where everybody's fixing their own house and the, the value of the neighborhood comes up. And then the schools, and then you reach out 10X further than that, and the schools are better. And then the firemen are getting taken care of, the police. Or maybe we don't even need a police department anymore because everybody's so freaking sane now. Mm. People aren't killing each other. Yeah. And not hating on each other, not beating their wives. Like the, the, the amount of dumb stuff we do, and that I've done. When I'm, when, I, when I'm working, when I'm on course, when I'm like, when I'm, you know, I'm not bothering other people. I think if everybody just got more productive on fulfilling their own potential, well, nobody would have time for wars, drugs. You, you wouldn't even have time to go find a drug dealer. You'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'll get, I'll get it later. <laughs> you know, I'll get it later, but right now I got this. If I can make it, I have not collaborated with other people. I didn't come for money. I had no connections. I have refused to like not be myself. And yet somehow I made it. And so the, the one thing is like, if you just don't quit, if you don't quit, if you refuse to quit, you will not fail. One, people should be invested in the beginning and just in themselves. Every chance you get to, to go to something that help, could possibly help you, has a, if it has a 1% chance of even adding to the value you have in your, spend the money. Don't sit on money, money's useless. So. If you have $5,000 left in your account, I would spend the whole 5,000 on yourself. When you spend money on yourself, you're gonna start getting better at whatever you're doing. If you just keep doing it, if you keep spending it, just because you spent it once and it didn't work, go do it again, and then again, and then again. That, 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 that has been one thing in my life. Like if, if you ask me, hey, what's one thing? I always invest in me first. Not the business. Not the business. Not the real estate, me. My, my condition, how am I doing? Am I around the right people? Am I listening? Like, I don't care what it is. Dinner, lunch, charities. I just go to anything, anything where I think there's other people doing well. You know, the 10X rule is based on, look, you're, you're, the goals people are setting are too small. You know, I want to get a good job. I want to get married. I want to be happy. The goals are wrong. And I hate to tell somebody their goals are wrong, but I'm just, I, I don't know that your goals are wrong. You know, I, I know that, my goals have always been too small. Everything I have done in my life has not been, it, it, I have underestimated what I could do. Every time I've gotten to where I got, I was like, dang, dude, I could have, that, that wasn't even that hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't even that difficult. And it got easier as I got rid of the people that said I couldn't do it. Yeah. Mostly, it wasn't really people t saying I couldn't do it, it was mostly people saying, Dude, but why do you need to? Mm. They, they were questioning why I need to, right? So if your kid decides, man, he wants to be, he don't want to be an astronaut. He's like, I don't want to be an astronaut, dude. I want to be the guy that creates the company that sends millions of people to another planet. See, he's like, why would I want to be the pilot, dude? He's just another worker. I want to be, I want to be the Elon Musk that figured it out, mm. right? So, so, and, and you'll be like, man, just be happy to be an astronaut, right? But, but he's got a bigger dream. And, and we should all, that, that's the first thing I would tell people. Look, whatever you think your dream is, one, you got to add money. You got to, people, people are having goals and dreams without money. You know, there's all these quotes on the internet. A, a goal without a date is a, merely a wish that will never happen. <laughs> Whatever. Dude, dude, a goal without money attached to it, okay, is something that will never be accomplished because there is no goal on this planet that doesn't require money, including happy. You, to be happy, you need money. And, 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 I, and your audience can say, I'd love to see their comments. Like, 
You cannot be happy without money. The only way you can be happy and broke is to be insane. Yeah. <laughs> because the only an insane person would say, yeah, dude, we're all good. I don't know where food's coming from tonight, but I'm happy. That means, well, I don't know where you, you, how you're paying for your drugs. Because you can't be happy knowing I can't pay for the next meal. It's just, it's, 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 it's mentally impossible. So you got to be in the market. You got to be looking at deals. You got to have confidence. You got to get debt. You got to have cash. Okay. Do not use the last two as an excuse not to do a deal. Shame on you. If you leave here and you keep blaming, I don't have the money and I don't have the bank. You don't need the money and you don't need the bank. You need the damn deal. To me, the interest only loan is a, is a really great loan to get because, because you have a stable, stable, one of your greatest expenses is now stabilized completely, meaning the debt will not go up. So if my, my debt payments are 400 grand a year, they're never gonna change. My taxes will keep changing, my expenses will keep changing, employee payroll will keep changing. I need to secure and stabilize as much as I can. So interest only is not really about the asset class as much as it is about the amount of leverage you use. Anyone can get, with, with, it, as long as you're working with the right lender and the size of the deal is right, almost anyone can get an interest only loan. So if you get down to 50%, you're probably good. You just gotta ask your bank, like that. the lady yesterday said, oh, we don't do interest only, guarantee they do interest only. And you shouldn't be scared, scared, scared of interest only because what, what is principal and interest anyway? Principal pay down, is like a 2%, a, a, a point and a half pay down over 10 years. Over 10 years, you're gonna pay down your debt, maybe 15%. So rather than me putting 65% down, I pay 50% down right now, and it's interest only the whole time. All I'm doing is prepaying my pay down. To get the deal, you need a commitment. You gotta have a commitment when you leave here. You gotta be like, okay, man, I'm gonna take my money. How many of you got cash in the bank right now? You have cash in the bank because you don't have confidence in these deals. I don't have cash in the bank because I trust my real estate more than I do my cash. How many of you got a 401k? Good. That's because you do not understand the value of real estate. Because if you understood the value of real estate the way I do, you would not have a 401k that you can't access for 30 years. How many of you got equity in your home? Excellent. And that just shows me that you do not have complete confidence in the game that I'm telling you right now because if you had complete confidence in what I'm doing, you would not have equity in your home. You probably wouldn't even have a damn home. You'd have your money sitting in 161 units somewhere paying you a check every month <clears throat> to make your house payment that you owe money on. You guys that are just getting started, you're not gonna start right here. You're gonna start down there. Okay, probably in another city, another town. I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana, no money, raised by a single mother. I was in debt at 25 years old. The first thing that I had to do in my life was not learn a new skill. The first thing I had to do to get my life moving in the right direction was self-development. It is vital, it was vital for me that I improve myself and I could start depending upon me. I had to show up every day with some rituals, some disciplines, and start getting myself to trust me. Not trust others, but trust myself to do the right thing every day. One of the things that I started doing was beating the sun up every morning. I'm gonna beat that sun up every morning so that I had the discipline and the control of, over my life. So I knew, hey, before that thing pops, I'm gonna pop. I'm gonna get out of bed, depend on myself, get up at the same time every day, and for me that time, regardless of where I was, was beat that sun up. No matter where I am, I'm gonna beat that thing up. So it gives me a sense of control over my own life. Second thing, I had to start cleaning up my life and my friends and my environment. When I was younger, between 15 and 25, I was doing crazy stuff in my life. Wasting my weekends, I have the saying, weekends are for the week. I was drinking, fooling around with a bunch of bad things, bad people, making poor choices. At 25 years old, I cleaned it all up. Quit going to those places, quit using those things, quit hanging out with people that did not have ethics and discipline in their life, that weren't committed to the same things that I was. I wanted to build something in my life. I wanted to become someone 
And to do that, to become someone in the eyes of the world, the first thing I had to do was become someone I could depend on. So put some things together, three or four things you can do every day to start the day, kickstart your day, get going in your day to give you a sense of respect for yourself, accomplishment for yourself. Look, just beating that sun up every morning gives me the sense of accomplishment that I did what I said, said I was gonna do, that I woke up when I said I would wake up, and I start building respect for myself, start believing in myself so that I can go out into the world and maybe, maybe, maybe today, maybe today when I go into this meeting that I'm dressed for, maybe they'll believe in me as much as I believe in me and that'll show up in a contract, a deal, maybe even some money. I used to listen to guys that were millionaires mm -hmm. and they were like, when I look back now, I'm like, oh, they were all like, don't get bigger, bigger's not better, fly under the radar. Uh, you know, it, it, what matters is how much you make, how much you net, how much you keep, save mm -hmm. your money, everything. All those guys that are worth two and three and four million, even some guys that are worth five and 10, mm -hmm. dude, they're all about contraction. That's right. They're trying to save, conserve what they have. Because when you start talking to these other dudes, I'm not talking about myself now. When I get around guys that are worth 600 million, 800, 4 billion, mm -hmm. they never talk about that. Dude, they think my money's chump money. They're like, dude, that, that, that's not money right there. Dude, look, look, quit looking at your notes. Okay, what do you want to do here? It's in my notes. No, but it's in you, okay? okay? What do you want? What does Tommy need to do now? Tommy's making 400 grand, worried about somebody that's no good, okay? Where does Tommy need to go? Screw the mechanics. Okay. Where you been, screw where you been. Okay. Dude, where, where, are you in the right vehicle? You have to change. Okay, where you been means nothing. N n none of this, the, the, the chick that you hired in New Orleans, what you did last year, dude, none of it matters. Well, now, where are you gonna go? No, 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 you just wanna skip now, dude. Okay. You just wanna drop the past. It doesn't matter, okay? So my goal for you, I don't know if it's your goal, but I'm hearing you say some of this, is l l let's just go to number one in your market. You know, I hear people all the time complain about their job. They don't want to have a job. I'm like, man, you have to love your job. If you don't love your job, how are you going to go start a business and have people that work for you that don't hate their job? It's a gift to be able to have a job. Like if you can smile, I really believe this. If I can smile throughout my life, even when I'm eating shit, like, yeah, okay, what else you got? <laughs> you know? I was telling Elena, she was down there boxing this morning and with Javier and man, she, her kicks are getting awesome. And she had this look on her face, right? I said, look, you got to smile when you do that kick. You got to smile when you punch. You got to smile when you get punched. Because when you can smile when you're eating shit and taking a punch, when things are not going well, when you're terrified and you can keep smiling through it, I think, I think Roosevelt said, or, or maybe it was Churchill said, hey, look, when you're going through hell, skip move, run, okay, and have a smile on your face. Like it doesn't bother you. And, and you become dangerous to other people when you can eat shit. You're humble enough to say, yeah, okay, I'll do the dishes. Okay, I'll sweep the floors. The advantages of multifamily investing, number one, more doors, the easier to manage and fund the project. It's easier, it's just an easier deal. Two units, harder to manage than 22 units. Because the bigger you get, the further away you can get from it. Two units, you need a manager. That manager is gonna charge you at least 10 or 12%. Somebody's gonna manage the property. Somebody's gonna answer the phone calls. Four grand a month, somebody's gonna want at least 400 bucks a month to take the bullshit phone calls. Number two, all units. One location reduces management activity. Number three, one closing, one property. I can buy one deal, get 300 units. You buy 300 houses, you need 300 closings. Four, one financial statement. 300 units fits on one financial statement. One duplex fits on the same financial statement. Number five, produce enough revenue to hire a management team. Advantages of multifamily, you can hire a management team. Number six, produces enough cash flow to invest in CapEx. CapEx, circle this word. It means expenditure on the capital of the building, meaning the capital improvements of the building. Roof, floors, cabinets. How many have done cabinets before? Use graphics. The guy that wraps your cars in your city, say, hey, come wrap my cabinets. I like things done quickly. I bought the house. Elena's not there. I call my wrap guy. Come in here, man. Don't sand it. Don't paint it. Wrap it. Boom, it was done in an afternoon. Number seven, more units allow more amenities. 
Two units, you do not have a swimming pool, you do not have security, you do not have a gym. 300 units, you got a gym, you got security, you got trees, you got picnics, you got dog parks, you got great stuff, you got gates. I have properties where the pool at the apartment building is nicer than the pool that we have at our house. And Elena's like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the pool at the apartment building. I got some apartment buildings, if I was single, that's, I mean, I'd move in there. Cause they got action everywhere. And the bigger the deal is, the easier it is to add value and spend money on it, right? If I'm gonna spend some money, man, I could spend it, cross it across a bunch of stuff rather than two units. Why do I love real estate? Why, why does real estate build financial freedom? Number one, protects your capital, okay? If, if I buy this deal, is the money, is the money, is the cash, the money that I put down to buy this deal, is the money gonna be worth more or less in the future? No, the cash. Cash is worth less in the future. What about this building? Only if, by the way, not all buildings are worth more in the future. If the building's in a good location and it stays occupied and rents can rise, it will be worth more, worth more money in the future, okay? I want you to be sure you guys understand this. Not all real estate goes up in value. You think it's good to be liquid. I would encourage everybody in the room to stay illiquid. Wall Street wants you to be liquid. The banks want you to be liquid, okay? The courts want you to be liquid. Your lawyer wants you to be liquid. Because as long as you're liquid, they can grab it from you. You understand? Like if you're liquid, you're never gonna file, file for bankruptcy. You'll never ever tap into a bankruptcy option. If you don't have a lot of debt, you can't use the bankruptcy courts which are put there to protect you from losing everything. Now, I've never filed bankruptcy because my real estate got me through all the hard times, 2000, 2010, 2020, COVID. My apartments got me through when our other business hurt, despite what you guys saw in the news, by the way, when rental, apartment rentals were gonna go to 84%, 70%, the world was gonna go to hell. We collected more rent during COVID than we collected the previous year. Did you even have the courage to borrow money? Because if you don't have the courage to borrow money, you will never have net worth and you will never have a good credit score. Everybody agree? And you don't need to worry about your credit score. How many, how many of you have uh, you've been told you need to raise your credit score in order to be free on this planet? No, you need net worth to be free on this planet. Shoes, completely made up. Nobody needs a pair of Fendi's and my wife does not need six inch heels. Everybody agree? Okay, you don't need all that stuff. But we made it up, so you got a product, you got a service, and now we can sell it to people. But you do need a place to live, and you need water, and you need food. Everybody agree? I gotta have something over my head to shelter me from the, the exterior. I need some food, and I need some water. Those things will not change no matter what happens with the internet. Amazon cannot replace housing. It can replace where you get your books. So when I'm watching Blackstone take, okay, why are they taking currency, converting it to buildings, okay? They take and write a check. They wrote, wrote a check for the entire thing, no debt, 10,000 houses. They then waited, filled it up with renters. I'm watching this in 2008, filled it up with renters. And then what they did was they refied the entire process, sold it as bonds to your grandmother, they pay your grandmother like two and a half to three and a half percent. Okay, your grandmother's so happy that every quarter she gets a little freaking bang. They probably worked with AIG to do this or State Farm or Allstate or Prudential or MetLife or New York Life. Insurance companies back most of my real estate transactions. Okay, because real estate, real estate is, is, is that thing that an insurance company can use to depend on to pay for your life benefit. It's not about getting the right answer, it's about being able to use the information in the right situation. And so you have to go into a situation knowing something's gonna be stable, particularly in an environment where there's a lot of variables. And we live in an environment right now with a lot of variables, with COVID, the mask, the election coming. Who, who knows, who, there's a million different things going on out there. You cannot, you cannot add another variable to that many variables. So the thing that you need to do is you have to be the stable person in an environment where there's a lot of 
craziness going on. I had so many people tell me, well, it depends. It depends on the situation. No, it, it, you, you need to be the same person every time, regardless of the situation. Because if you try to change to every, if you try, that's the problem with this whole adapting thing. If you're gonna adapt to every situation that happens in life, you'll never become anything. Because you'll just be a chameleon one second, and then a tiger the next second, and then a kitty cat the next second, and then a, a roadkill the next. You'll just become whatever is going on in the environment, and you'll never become strong, the strong you you should be. And, and that this disparity in America, particularly in America and around the world, the disparity between the, the, the people that have something and everybody else is getting bigger and bigger. If you don't like the way that is, if you don't like the way that game's working out, you need to improve your skill set so that you can go get yours for you and your family. Because it's out there. I'm just telling you, the, the, the opportunities out there is whether you want to open your eyes, be conscious the whole time, go look at it and figure out how do you get your share of the, of the, of the American dream. Just because you're great doesn't mean you don't want money. In fact, the greater you are, the more money you're going to want. So if you want great people, I, I hear companies always talk about, I can't find great people because you don't pay them anything, man. Mm. Right? So like if I, if I give you, if I offer you 700 grand right now, can you swim? Yeah. You any good? I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. So if I offer you 700 grand right now and say, hey, dude, you got to go swim after that boat and you got to catch it. Like you're not gonna worry about how, how cold the water is. The water's <laughs> probably freezing ass cold, right? You're gonna you're gonna if you're money motivated, mm. okay, you're gonna fly in there. I, but but let's say I put seven hundred grand out there and say whoever gets to the boat first. Exactly. Well, what traits? Exactly. Do you, what would what, you do it? Would you do it? Probably. I think anyone in the anyone in the world would do it. I don't know. No. Unless you're a billionaire and you're like yeah, then seven hundred. You're not motivated by seven hundred. Exactly. Grand, right. You'd, you'd want more than seven hundred. Yeah, you'd be like, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, but you know what? I know billionaires would actually be the first people to hit the water. Exactly. Because they understand money. They understand, man, it's worth me paying that price to get the 700 because they know what to do with 700. A lot of people are not money motivated because they simply don't know what to do with money. Every time they get it, they actually lose it. Hey, I always tell you guys when you're picking real estate out, make sure that you never compromise location. Okay, look at this. This location right here. Some of you have been jabbing on me because oh Grant Cardone doesn't take his own advice he went and bought a house in Malibu he says not to buy a house uh, number one this is not a house this is a piece of art located in one of the most popular places in the country and certainly in the state of California this is beautiful Carbon Beach uh, it is 150 feet of frontage on one of the most desirable beaches in Malibu. And I'm saying this as humbly as I can. Like, oh my gosh, look, if you ever get a chance in your life, I'm not just bragging here, I'm just trying to show you don't compromise location ever. The moment you compromise location, you can fix a lot of things. I can fix the paint, I can fix the interior. This interior of this house is very, very dated. Um, some people will like the cedar shake, the cottage look. Uh, the, some people will like that color, not like the color. Uh, the doors and windows are dated. They probably need to be changed. The pool at some point uh, needs to be updated. It's 15 years old. Some people will be all right. Some people will be like, I don't like it. It's just a lap pool. But it's 75 feet, 75 feet of uh, a lap pool on Carbon Beach with neighbors that are just on every major list. And it's just one super, super, super desirable little spot in the universe. So when you're picking real estate, doesn't matter how big it is, this house happens to be 10,000 square feet, um, interiors, three car garage, two, two stories, sits up on caissons that go 60 feet deep into the sand uh, and into uh, um, the granite. Uh, to provide it with this base. It's got a 75 foot lap pool on the Pacific Ocean. Like it's just gorgeous, gorgeous. Can't build it again. If you tried to build this again, it would take probably five years if you could get it approved. Probably would not get 10,000 square feet approved again. Would not get the pool approved. 
and just a fantastic, fantastic location. So for all of you that are out there hearing me say, oh, Grant Cardone doesn't take his own advice. You're right, man. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I would not. If I was on the come up, just trying to get my game on, just getting started, I wouldn't go buy a house. It doesn't provide my best friend cash flow. If it doesn't have cash flow, what, what am I? I got to fund it. This house actually could provide me with cash flow. But if it didn't, the location's so ridiculous. If I do the right things with the interior and the colors and the cedar shake, uh, the doors and windows, if I update this pool a little bit, do the right things with the stone, furnish it on the interior in a way that it should be, there's a real good chance I make money on this house. Now, you know what I paid because it's been posted all over the internet, uh, what I paid for the house when Real Deal posted it in the Wall Street Journal. Some of you are like, oh my God, he overpaid for this house. How could this guy pay that much money for this house? What do you think I'm going to sell this house for in the future? 150 feet. There's three other homes on Carbon Beach that have 150 feet on the ocean. None of it, by the way, is elevated. None of it. Most of it is down on the sand. You got Larry Ellison down the street, Michael Milken. I mean, these are these are super, super, super wealthy families. Larry Ellison has one home. His son has building a brand new home that they say will sell for 150 million if he ever sells it. Uh, Michael Milken's home, they say, is worth a hundred and a half. When you are picking your home, it could be an $80,000 home, an $800,000 home, an $8 million home. Stretch. If you're going to do it, stretch and get the best possible location you can. I made this mistake. My first three homes, I made the mistake believing I'm going to buy for less in a great neighborhood. I knew, I knew to buy in a great neighborhood, but I, I was scared to pay the extra money to be in that little pocket of that neighborhood where the location was literally irreplaceable. So if you're buying a house this year, you're buying an apartment, or you're buying an office building, or you're buying uh, retail or storage, maybe storage less, okay? Make sure you get that kind of location that's irreplaceable. People say the dumbest things. It could be family, it could be your wife, your husband, it could be a, a mom, a dad, an uncle, an aunt, it could be your kids coming from school. People say what they think, and what they think will be what they say, and what they say and think often enough, long enough, reinforced enough, I promise you, will be what they do, okay? So look at some of the dumb things you say, like this. Here's one dumb thing people say. Time heals all things. Really, you get a splinter in your foot and you don't pull the splinter out. You don't look at it, confront it, and say, I gotta pull that little booger out. I gotta pull that little splinter out. If you just leave it there, you might get used to it. Yeah, you'll get used to it. 30 years goes by, you still got a splinter in your foot. Who knows that splinter gets into your bloodstream, goes to your heart, spikes your heart, kills you. Time does not heal all things, folks. You know what heals all things? Taking a look at it having the courage to look at it. Hey, what happened to me? How did I screw up here? What, what hurt or what pain or what happened that I had a loss? I see people go through life with all these losses, unwilling to look at them, all crippled by the time they get older, not old, but they looking old, because they believe that time heals. Look, time heals when you confront it when you look at it, when you pull the splinter out and take responsibility for it. Don't believe everything you believe. You know what I'm saying? Because some of the ideas you got, they just dumb. And dumb things will cause you to do dumb things. Well, I, yeah, I can tell you, for me, like I was always scared of money, you know? Uh, and, and I was terrified of it. So, so like if you look at, still today, like I look at the bill of everything. It's a bill of everything? It, if something costs something, I want to know how much it was. Uh -huh. And so, like, how much is it? Like, I'm going to ask that question, whether, whether it matters or not. I'm, it doesn't matter where I get in my life. I, I don't think I'm ever going to be free of, how much was that? How much was the dinner? How much was How much this? was dinner? How much was the tip? How much was the coat? How much was the jacket? What did, the, you know, me, uh, and, me and Elena, like, Elena's like, hey, it's going to be fine, man. Like, look, what, look, 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 look at what you've done. We cannot spend this. And I'm like, how much was it? I want to know how much it was, because when I grew up, you had to know what things cost. Mm -hmm. And so the point you're, you're questioning about money is it's a terrifying thing because 
it's the one thing in life that, you know, the NFL is not going to give me the ball. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm never going to get a chance to golf. I can't win in those environments. But with money, everybody gets money. It's the one place where everybody gets it. And now what do I do? Mm -hmm. And I, I can lose it now. So it's a terrifying concept, like like power. You know, very few of us ever ever get any kind of influence or power, right? Once you get it, you're like, hey, what do I do with this? You know, am I going to do it? I'm gonna, am I going to do the right things with it? Mm -hmm. And so I think people withhold themselves because they don't, we're not educated about money. We don't know where it comes from. We have a lot of misinformation about it. Our parents terrified us. You know, money doesn't grow in trees. Uh, save your money, it'll save you. All these 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 things our parents told us because they were enamored mm -hmm. uh, or, or encumbered with the same kind of liabilities around money. Right. I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to keep it. And the, th the third, the worst part that we're all at is I don't know how to invest it. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll, some people get good at getting it. Very few actually. Fewer people at keeping it but probably more than getting it. Mm -hmm. There's probably a big group in America that have learned how to keep money. Because they're afraid to lose it. They so don't want to invest it. it, they don't want to use it, they don't want to, you know, um, you know, Kanye talks about this, how white people, how white people save all their money. And they just keep it, they just store it. Like I had a, an uncle, he buried everything he ever made. <laughs> it went in the backyard. Wow. The other uncle was, was um, he was he was a guy that bought, he, he, he worked hard, very, very frugal, Italian descent, mm -hmm. and he would uh, buy, buy real estate, but it was always buy low and sell high. He actually never sold anything, but that was the concept, buy low. Buy the cheapest, lowest, get everything on a deal. If there's food stamps to be gotten, you go get those food stamps. If there's a, if there's a government deal, get it. If it's Section 8 and the government will pay you, pay it. So both these guys, different kind of mentalities, were extremely frugal. Mm -hmm. My other uncle was uh, worked in a refinery, he basically saved all his money, paid everything off, got out of debt. That was their lifestyle. My dad died when I was 10. So he paid all his debt off, had everything paid. And, and so that's all I had, right? Everybody around me was like, get money. Keep it. Keep yeah. it. Don't use it, you know, but you, but you should invest. But nobody ever learns that third one. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think we're just a bunch of people walking around terrified of this this apparent apparency of it's scarce right and it's not mm -hmm. and, and and you know it's not there's nothing scarce about it and you know i'm always keeping it real with you what has happened to our country that we make our idols and our icons and our heroes rappers and entertainers and ball players and then we show disgust for a businessman that can bank 50 million a year or 20 million a year. What is wrong? Look, when a guy can go out and make passive investments, great decisions, execute, show tremendous discipline, okay, and disconcert between good investments and bad investments, and then make 20 million or 30 million bucks, pay three or four million dollars in taxes, three or four million dollars to his charities, his churches, his community, helps out with groups of people, and, and we have discontent for the businessman that's out there year after year making great investments, great decisions, showing leadership in the marketplace. Look, that marketplace out there, that economy is the most savage, most difficult playing field in the world to negotiate. Yet, who do we admire in our culture? Rock stars? Look, these guys got great skills. Kid gets out of school, makes 12 million a first year, and, and we make posters of them and sweatshirts. And, and you put their kids in their jerseys. But what about the business people that make our economy work, that pay the taxes, that make the schools work, the churches work, that make the, the fire department, the police department because they pay taxes, because they're out there making great investments. Look, admire business people that are able to bank year after year. Admire these people, study them, learn from them. Don't be disgusted with them and turn off anybody, anybody that would suggest to you that making money in this country is wrong. Look, don't envy business people. Admire them. Emulate them. Learn from them. Particularly these guys are doing it year after year after year, not just on income, but on wealth development, because that's where you need to be. That's where you need to be thinking. That's the economy you want to create for yourself, your family, your household, and your future.
When you start looking, when you go from a, doing a, a $3 million deal where I started, a, 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 I did my first deal was 1.9 million to looking at billion dollar deals. You're gonna take the same trajectory, I promise you. I'm blessing you guys right now. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna start with little deals. If you listen to me, you'll skip those, but you can start there if you wanted to. You wanna eat Cheerios, you can, okay? Hey, or you could just like, hey, let me go get the good stuff right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat off the top of the shelf right now. You just gotta have imagination, right? And not be limited to like, oh, I don't have the money, I don't have the connections, I, I'm, not in the, I'm not in the environment, I don't know these people. Good, well you're gonna get to know these people. If I know them, you can know them. And, and so, so when we have this trapped equity, I'm like, I'm trying to do these big deals and I'm like, I don't have the money to do them. So I want you to write this down. What do you have? Not what you don't have. What do you have, right? The question needs to go from, you know, not I can't do it to how can I do it? Not what I don't have, what do I have? And or who has it? So we basically made a list. Who's got this money? Okay, without me selling my properties because I do not want to sell my properties. Because if I sell my properties, I'm just going back to zero. I could sell the whole portfolio right now. I'm just gonna go back to zero and have to start over again. I don't wanna start from zero. I wanna start, I wanna just add to what I have, right? So we made a list. We started talking to guys in the brokerage business. You gotta get a mortgage broker. This guy, Pravesh, is a mortgage broker. How many have we been through, Ryan? How many names do you have? Pravesh? Eight or nine. Yeah, we in got- In the last two years. Dude, never rely on one, on one bank or one lender. You want more lenders than you got kids and wives and husbands. This is polygamy. <laughs> okay? So we just started making a list of lenders. We started out with, a, I started with a regional bank. I started with a local bank, San Diego National Bank in San Diego. They're out of business. They collapsed in 2010. They were taken down by the federal government. They were replaced by another group. The federal government gave a group in Minneapolis $500 million to buy the bank out. It's basically a takeover, a hostile takeover by the federal government, seizing property. A guy, the, the guy that owned the bank had 300 million he could put in the bank to fund the bank in 2010, and the federal government said, no, we're gonna give $500 million to a guy in Minneapolis to buy you out. And it was federal money, tax dollars. Your money was funded to another guy, the club. They took this other guy out. I owed, I owed 50 million to the bank in San Diego. When the new bank came in, the new bank said, you need to pay your loans off. I'm like, pay my loans off? Yeah, you're in violation. You, you, you have technical default, uh, technical default. I've never missed a payment in my life. Oh yeah, but the asset values because of 2008 have collapsed. So, and your net worth has changed. And the world has changed. I'm like, yeah. And by the way, because you pay us is why we're here. We know you can pay, we know you have money. And I had a bunch of money sitting in a bank account and they wanted to grab that money. That's what they wanted, okay? The guys that didn't have money, they never called them. And I learned in 2010, I'm like, hey, don't have a bunch of money sitting around. You got money sitting around? They're gonna come get that money. When shit goes to, when, when the world goes to hell, they go after people that have money, not people that don't have money. You want debt. You want lots of it. So, so when I had 50 million in debt, what I learned in 2010 was, I don't have enough debt. I said, the next time this shit happens, I'm gonna have $2 billion, I'm gonna sink a ship. Okay? I'm, 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 they're gonna have to pay attention to me. Because if you're not big enough, they're not gonna pay attention. Too big to what? Exactly, you guys need to get too big to fail. Don't hate on the system, man. Don't hate the game, don't hate the player. Learn the game and be a player. Showing up means Showing up, it don't mean you got to the office. You understand, it doesn't mean you came to work. For me, showing up means I show up. I've been showing up since I was 25 years old, man. Before that, I wasn't showing up. I was showing off. I was acting a fool, being a fool. High school, I didn't show up. I went to class, I never showed up. My body went in the room. See, showing up doesn't mean you got there. Showing up means you got there, and then you showed up again, and then you showed up again, and then you showed up again. 
It means you show up for the class, you show up for the homework, you show up for the class, you show up for the homework, you show up for the test, you freaking get a perfect grade. It means you keep showing up to the next level. And I hear a lot of people talking about showing up, you know, showing up's not everything. Let me tell you something, showing up, when you show up the right way, Johnny, you got to put your seatbelt on. When you show up the right way, when you show up the right way, showing up is 100% of success. Showing up means you're looking for deeper levels to show up, to pay attention. That's what I do every day. Every day I come to work, I'm like, show up, man. Show up for every little problem. Show up for every little opportunity. Show up for every little little new nuance, little angle, little particle, little movement. That's why I see all this stuff. Why is that not cleaned up? Why is this not cleaned up? Why, what's it, why didn't somebody pick that up? Who's that new person here? Hey, you feeling all right today? How many times have I asked you that before? You all right today? I know it's the little things. It's simple, it costs nothing to do this, show up. It costs you nothing. It makes all the difference. And it makes all the difference, man, showing up. You'll see things that no one else sees. And, and you know, the good news is anybody can do this. You just gotta make a commitment to show up. You know, and I was aware at that moment, how many times in my life I've, I've woken up like not sure. I think it started happening for me uh, years ago, like, like probably around 12 or 13. I didn't know what to do every day. What's, what's today going to bring? I th maybe it's after watching so much TV and eating so much sugar. You know, I think our diets definitely have a lot to do with all that. But look, I want to give you something today about how to get out of the funk. The funky hunk dunk. When I, by the time I was 25, this thing went on from 12 to 25. At 25 years old, I was in so much depression every day. I was using drugs, alcohol. I was self-medicating constantly, making bad decisions. I lived in a 275, uh, I mean, I just remember how much it was. It was $275 a month, and every other month I couldn't make the bill, the payment. I was late. Today, I live in this joint right here. I live up on the 33rd floor of this place. And completely different life today than I had then. 25, I went to a treatment center for 20, 28 days for drug addiction. I was using drugs every day. Hated it. Let me tell you something worse than drugs is how you feel about yourself. I hated myself every time I did a drug. Every time I smoked weed, every time, every time I did any drug, the moment I put the pill in my mouth, the weed to my mouth, something in my nose, I, I hated myself. I never felt good about using drugs. And so by the time I was 25, I had been using drugs for 10 years, but my problems started before that. My problems didn't start with the drugs. It started with my inability to manage this light grade chronic depression this for lack of better words this this idea that i wasn't good enough this idea that that um that um i didn't love myself you know that that you know my my mom gave my mom quit on me my mom told me hey don't come around here anymore my twin brother pretty much was done with me my sisters both knew that I was in trouble and were like, oh my God, you know, we're gonna get a call on him today. The people I worked with, the principal at the high school I went to said I couldn't, couldn't win dog catcher in my 11th and 12th grade, told my mom that. My student, uh, my PE teacher said I would amount to nothing. I wrecked my car on my driver's ed test. I failed my driver's license test. I was fired from my first six jobs, wouldn't leave the sixth one. Dude, I'm telling you, I was a loser. Loser, okay, I'm telling you, loser. And I didn't have to ask other people. Nobody had to tell me I was a loser. I knew I was a loser. So, look, if you've ever been there, I know there's people watching this right now. Maybe you don't even know who I am. You're like, who's this dude talking about himself, you know? I've come from that, where I was, bankrupt, spiritually, financially, Physically, I weighed 134 pounds. That's 40 pounds less than I weigh today. 
I was broken every way possible. I didn't have any money. I was in debt. But worst, the worst thing, the worst of the worst of the worst was how I felt about myself. I got out of that treatment center and the counselor told me on the way out of the treatment center, uh, if you read my last book, Be Obsessed or Be Average, it was the first book that I really shared anything about my life. Of all seven of my books, that, that one gives you a, a kind of a look inside my life more than anything. And um, maybe what I'll do is in this, maybe what I'll do is I'll have my guys give you, give you a, 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 a chapter of that book free. And um, it's not what I came here to give you. I want to do, I do want to give you something, but maybe my guys could put a couple of different links in here for you. So <clears throat> I got out of that treatment center and the counselor said to me, I think his name was Philip. I don't remember the guy now. I hated his guts then. I still don't think much of him. He said to me, guy was really confused. He was more confused than I was. He said, now that I look back, he said to me, he said to me, he said, hey, if you leave here, if you leave here and you don't give up, you know, because when you're there, you spill your guts, you tell them everything. And I told them I wanted to be rich and famous and, and help people and write books and, you know, be known all over the world. And he says, if you don't give all those ideas, I think he called it grandiosity. If you don't give up all these grandiose ideas of changing the world, uh, being rich, being famous, if you don't change all those ideas, dude, you'll never, ever ever make it you'll never stay what do you call it you'll never stay dry and sober if you're you're looking for uh if you have money and you have health and you don't have purpose and you don't have interest and you don't have excitement and you're not waking up every day like 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 with like hey i'm looking forward to getting to the gym and working out if you don't have those things going on or i'm going to go on a vacation or i'm going to spend time with my grandkids or my kids or I'm going to write a book or something exciting. If you don't have that, you're going to burn, okay? So, uh, first of all, let me just say, I don't know everything. I just know at 63 years old, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm in the best financial condition of my life, and I'm the most excited I've ever been in my entire life. That was not true just uh, 16, year, uh, 16 years ago, 17 years ago. Is that right? 63, 12 years ago. I'm sorry, 12 years ago. It wasn't, that was not true. I was stressed. I was burnt. I had three employees, two and a half employees, and only half of those worked. And I was doing all the work. I was running all over the country. I was doing 250 uh, uh, days a year traveling, picking up checks. I was a salesman, basically. I was a, I was a, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, I was, a, I was a salesman. I was out selling, pitching on planes. I was doing about uh, 100,000 miles a year on American and United, uh, buying a coach ticket, crossing my fingers, hoping for an upgrade, staying at the Marriott on award points. You know the game, right? I was away from my family. I had a new family at the time. I just got married. I was traveling every day. My quality of my life was terrible. And I made a decision to get off. I challenged myself to get off the treadmill, of that treadmill. Now, I knew that I couldn't get off that treadmill if I didn't have something else to go to, so I started studying people that have scaled their finances. I needed money to work for me. I didn't need to keep working for the money. I had a little bit of money put away, but I was terrified of it, if you know what I mean. By the way, if you're running this channel for the first time, more and more people are using the YouTube channels and the Instagram people our age are using it to access information. I dropped, I've dropped about 5,000 videos in this channel about sales, marketing, starting over, scaling, health, finances, real estate. I started playing this real estate game hard about 12 years ago. I started spending more time investing in real estate than I did on picking up a sales check. I started pulling away from some of the old ideas that I had been sold as a kid by the banks and Wall Street, which was diversified retirement accounts, 401ks, IRAs. I took my IRA and my 401k money that, and it was self-directed and I basically took control of it and took it away from Fidelity and uh, Schwab and Wall Street. I took that money away from them, a couple things that I did. I went and looked at my money. I had money in savings accounts, checkings accounts, money markets, uh, where else? I had some mutual funds, I had ETFs, I had 401ks and IRA, all of it either sitting in money markets or garbage, paper stock, 
and I pulled all control of that money back over. I also had equity in a home. I grabbed the equity out of the home. I sold the home and went and rented. I literally reworked the entire finances of my life. Just keep this in mind, think about this. You don't have to go do it today and you don't have to, you don't have to be right or wrong on this deal. Hey, how do I grow my business 10 times, not one or two times? How can I scale my business out so that I have, maybe you have 100 customers or 200 customers, how can I have 2,000 customers? You got 2,000, how can I have 20,000 customers? This is what the big companies do. You got four employees that you don't like? How can I have 40 employees and have somebody else handle the 40 that I don't like? Because what's happening right now is people are scaling down when they should be scaling up. If you don't like your financial condition, look at your environment. My, my financial condition has been an indication of the people around me and what I'm listening to every day. If you don't have something, I'm not talking about a book right now. I'm talking about you guys need to be buried in content, buried, immersed. How, how many of you heard this, this saying, uh, uh, dr I'm drinking the Kool-Aid? You need to swim in it. You need to drown yourself in it. You need to immerse yourself, inject it into your arm. You need to smell it, breathe it, love it, drink it. Immerse yourself in whatever Kool-Aid you're gonna drink, be all in. No one's gonna come to your house and make your dreams come true. It won't happen. It's not gonna come through the TV. It's not gonna come to you on Facebook. It's gonna become, because you have a place to go every day and get your head right, your attitude right. How many believe you're in the attitude business first? Oh, wow. Seven people. Yeah, I'm all in, man, I'm all in. How many of you got people on your team like this? Man, yeah, yeah, man, I'm gonna do good, man. I'm gonna do good, I'm, I'm, I'm going after it. How many of you heard people building teams say, I can't find good people? Yeah, well, what's the point? Why are you telling that to other people? Why do you tell that to other people? Why are you trying to make sense and not finding good people? You get what you think and say every day. I can't find any good people. Seven billion people on planet Earth. You can't find good people because you quit. You quit. So you just need to know the truth. When you criticize anything, you're saying something about yourself. See, I don't get rid of haters. I, I'm like, come on, man, bring it on, dog. Tell me about yourself. Well, you talk about money too much. You ain't got any. Oh, you work too hard. You don't work hard enough. You too cocky. You ain't cocky enough. Why are you gonna blame my swag? Because you ain't got any. Huh? You left yours at somebody's house. Somebody told you you were an introvert and you bought into it. Right? Somebody said you're shy and you bought into it. Somebody said you don't need to have a business. You don't need all that. You don't need a jet. You don't need the big house. You don't need a bunch of money. Do you gave up? I didn't. Keep it to yourself. You don't need to be contagious. Okay? People quit this organization and what do they do? Oh yeah. Right? What do they say? Never, write this down, never ever take advice from a quitter. If you quit anything, man, I quit going to the gym, it just didn't work for me. I don't need to hear that from you. I'm gonna get different information from the people still going to the gym, would you agree? Look, if you don't believe in you enough to invest in yourself every day, I don't have time, I got the kids, I got the wife, I got the marriage, I got the problem, I got the Boy Scouts, I got this. Dude, you're sold on something else. I don't even know what you're talking about right now. You're, you're manufacturing excuses to contaminate other people. I don't need to hear about all your problems. I don't care. Look, if you're waking up today and you're not feeling it, I'm not talking about workouts either. Whatever it is, going to work, making a call, cleaning up something that you had to clean up, handling some problem that you have, and you're waking up feeling a little depressed, kind of down. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Just don't quite feel it. Everybody expects me to be up all the time, thinks I'm supposed to, you know, be Mr. 10X, Mr. 100% every day. That is never the case. Never. So look, if you're running to this channel for the first time, subscribe to it. I'm gonna share three things that I do to get me through this. 
And make sure you comment or like. I'm building this channel out. I spent the last 10 years building it out with content material of things that I'm discovering in my life and in my business in hopes that it will help people. And I don't have all the right answers. I just want you to know like, 40% of the time I'm wrong. Maybe a little more than that actually. Even, I just gotta be right on the big things, you know? And one thing that, that has helped me, whether it was writing a book and finishing it, or starting my speaking career when I did it 30 years old, I was going door to door to businesses around America for three million miles. Go to a city, I was living in Houston at the time, in Bel Air, Texas, and I'd fly to Salt Lake City and I'd call on business owners. I'd set a, an event two weeks in advance, commit to the hotel, fly to Salt Lake City, knew no one, no one knew me, I had no name, no books, uh, there was no social media, and I never felt like doing it, I was scared to death had no clue what I was doing, didn't know who I was calling on, don't even know how much I believed in what I was doing, like, I did believe in it, but it was like, you know, I didn't have any statistics or facts or success stories, <clears throat> and regardless of how I felt, just like this morning, regardless of how much doubt there was or uncertainty, uh, fear, no matter who you're watching or who you're following, whether it's a political person, a, a rapper, movie star, teacher, coach, parents, I don't care how much in confidence they put out, how much athlete, how much confidence or certainty that they push out, push out, like, like project, they wake up. There's days they wake up and they don't feel it. They don't feel it. They don't, they don't want to do it. They're uncertain. Uh, they're feeling some low grade depression, whatever you want to call it. Look, I woke up like that this morning. I went, got up, family's not here this weekend. Uh, Elena's got the kids. She's teaching them how to shoot guns this weekend. And uh, I'm here by myself, so I'm waking up this morning like, I don't want to work out. I missed yesterday. I'm not feeling it. So what do you do? What do you guys do when you don't feel it? So this is what I do. I just get a little closer. This is what I do. I get a little closer, just like I did when I was 30 years old, starting my speaking career. Never thought I'd be one of the top, considered one of the top two or three speakers in the world when I was 30 years old. I wanted that but I didn't know how I was gonna to get to that. And what I did was, when I was having to fly to these cities, Salt Lake City, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Toronto, uh, Vancouver, Chicago, New York, like I had never even been to these places. I was literally flying to cities for the first time in my entire career. Didn't know the language, didn't know the, the culture, didn't know how they, they those little changes in, that happened between Toronto and New York, New York and Chicago, Chicago and Dallas, and Dallas and Salt Lake, Salt Lake and LA. Those are all very, very different markets and different people and different thinking. Dude, I was terrified. Okay, I'm doing this today to tell you I was terrified. I was so scared most of the time that it felt like not fear, it felt like depression, like I wanted to take the, fly, the, the, the sheets, just pull them over my head. So what I did to conquer that, to handle that, I literally would just get a little closer. I'd get myself a little closer to the action. Like this morning, I just got close to the gym. I actually went and walked by the pool. I have a pool in the same spot that we have a gym on the second floor here. And I walked out there, and as I passed the gym, because they're still doing the social distancing bullshit here, um, there was nobody in here. I'm like, okay, there's nobody in here. It's a sign I'm gonna go in there and work out, okay? So, number one, just try getting a little closer to the action. Hope that helps you. Just get a little closer. You don't have to commit to doing it completely. Just get closer to it. I came down here dressed. 
Uh, I put that I put that on before I left, so I was ready. So I got a little closer. Second thing, dude, if it calls you, do it anyway. You know, I coined this phrase years ago. Do it anyway. A buddy of mine, about the same time I was starting my business, I was having a lot of problems in my life. I was probably, it was before I started my business. I was still in Houston, Texas. I was going through tremendous, tremendous amounts of uncertainty, doubt about myself. I was in a transition, a career transition. I just lost a job, starting my deal. And I went one year, one year without working. I've never ever shared this before. One year and I did not, I mean, I had a little bit of money saved and I was going through it. I didn't, I didn't literally, I, I looked like I was working every day, but in truth I was not working. My twin brother actually knew that and finally confronted me and that's what got me off my ass. But this guy told me, he's like, look, you wake up in the morning and no matter what you're feeling, no matter how much you hurt, if your eyes are bleeding, do it anyway. This financial statement on this page is for companies, individuals, and households. Every company, a country, a city, every company, individuals, you wanna make a note here, companies, individuals, and households. Okay, if you're a household, uh, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill's a household, he's got a household. I know he's got a household, he's gotta have a house. I don't know who's in the house. His household has a budget. He's got income coming in, expenses going out. That's a financial statement. That's what that is right there. Income, uh, uh, less expenses equals what's left over. Period, end of story. That could be Google, Facebook, your house. It could be a company. It could be a country. It could be a city. They're all the same. By the way, I go to Canada, Japan. I go to Singapore, Dubai, Detroit, and the financial statement will be identical. The language will change. The financial statements will be identical everywhere you go. The top line of every financial statement for a household or a company or a city is what? Revenue, income, or sales, okay? This used to be sales, and then some accountant, how many accountants in the room? Some intelligent, smart person, okay, said, oh, we need to change that to like, to like revenue. It used to be simple, sales, okay? And then somebody's like, oh, we gotta call that something better. Okay, we're gonna call it revenue. It sounds more professional. Dude, it's sales, okay? How many of you don't like sales? How many of you in the room? Let me see a hand if you don't like sales, okay? If you're no good at it, you don't like it. So that means everybody in the room's a damn master, sensei. How many of you love watching my guys on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the up here uh, doing the sales thing? Dave, Todd, how good are those guys? Are they good? And then I show up around 11 o'clock and I show you a different variation. You're like, dang, dog, another level. You could be a black belt. That don't make you a sensei, right? So like, like I've done my thing, I've done my thing 30 years. There's a big difference between 30 years and six years. Like I know every little crevice and I'm still learning. I know little, little angles. Like one thing means a thousand things to me, not 10. You understand? Because I played the game a little longer. So you get deeper, you get sensei. So there's a lot of levels to the game, man. Sales is about revenue, folks. If you don't like sales, you wanna write this down, if you don't like sales, you don't like revenue. So get a t-shirt. I hate revenue. I hate sales, scratch it out, but I hate revenue. Because if you don't like sales, you're in trouble. At home, you're in trouble for your city, you're in trouble for your community, you're in trouble everywhere if you don't like income. Because you, unlike the government, can't print money. It's against the law. That's why the America, the United States government, the only product the United States government has is the printing of money. There is no other product. They print money so you work. You work, you'll never create wealth, okay? You wanna write this down. Well, no matter how hard you work, okay? Kevin can work his ass off. He can work 20 hours a day. He will never create wealth working. He will only create wealth when he invests. 
I'm about to move. I'm moving from Los Angeles, California, where I've been 22 years in California. My wife's been here 23 years. She came here to be an actress at 17 years old. And we're picking up and we're moving everything. I wrote the governor a letter three months ago and said, dude, you keep raising my taxes, I'm out of here. By the way, you should be doing that. You should be thinking about, hey, how can I avoid seven, eight, nine, 10, or 11% state income taxes? Most of you don't even know what your income tax is. You think when you buy something, sales tax is your income tax. I'm talking about the income tax you pay on earned income that you earned Jerry Brown didn't earn any of it. So I tell Jerry Brown, I'm done, dude. If you keep raising my taxes, they're going in that direction. We're like, okay, we're out of here. Now, I got to tell you, man, it is scary moving. It is terrifying to move. I'm like, oh, I'm going to move to Miami. I'm going to go live in a new place. We're going to rent a house for a while. We're going to figure out we got to make new friends. We don't know anybody there. All that stuff, right? All the trouble, figuring out the calendar, the money it costs to move, all that. And then I'm like, wait a minute. What, what are you worried about, dude? You so pinned down to one place, you can't get up and move every once in a while? It, it, it reminds me of how many people don't want change. The way it was is in the past. The way it's gonna be is in the future. So what is it gonna mean? A lot of trouble. Me and my wife, the kids, new furniture, new house, new place, new friends. I gotta talk to these guys here at the company. Hey guys, a year from now, maybe two years from now, we're gonna shut this thing down in LA and you guys are gonna move over there with me. But look, change is good. Don't be scared of it. You're not pinned down like, like you were, like it's 400 years ago and you lived in some village where they convinced you that the world was flat. Remember that? I think that's why we get scared of moving. The world is flat. Don't leave the village. You'll fall off. No, you won't. You're just going to change. You're going to evolve. You're going to make new friends. Dude, if you need to pick up and go some other place to make your life better, your family better, to find great schools to make more money, pick your shit up and move. My dad worked his ass off, and when he died, he did good. My mom had to sell everything. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, that didn't work. But he was considered successful, the middle class successful, briefcase, mm -hmm. good job, professional, people respected him, saved his money, had life insurance, house was paid for, everything by the book. And she was unloading stuff the next week because she was terrified. And so from the age of 10 to like 16, 17 years old, we were just scared, dude. Mm. Clipping coupons, buying everything on sale, single mother, everywhere she goes, she knows they're going to rip her off. The plumber, the mm. roofer, the car dealer, everybody's going to rip her off. Save your money, save for a rainy day. Yeah. Right. You know, a penny saved is. Right, yeah. a penny earned. It's yeah. not. It's a penny. Yeah. Right. It's a penny. Yeah. I mean, it's a penny, dude. Yes. You won't even pick a penny up today. You ain't with a penny. The third thing I would say about wealthy people is they're. I mean, different people have different ways they invest, but they tend to be more focused on the long-term appreciation of an asset rather than give me money this second. And, and I think the get, they're, they're, they're not stuck in this get rich quick thing. It's a delayed gratification. Yeah, they're more like, yeah, I'd rather have wealth tomorrow than rich today. Mm. And, and they do have a distinction between the rich and the wealthy, the, the, you know, the super wealthy are looking to create wealth beyond their own means and needs. Like they're not thinking about their kids, their boat, their plane. I know people think that, but that's not actually true. They're actually thinking about how do I create wealth for a, a lot of people? Amazon's got a million employees. Yeah. Uh, now most of them only earn minimum wage, but there's some people at the upper level of Amazon that are making fortunes. Success is vital. I have, so you, maybe you've heard me say this before, it's worth writing down again. Success is your duty. It is your obligation and your responsibility. Success to me is as vital to my survival as oxygen, food, and water. Shelter, I gotta have shelter. I gotta have water. I have to have oxygen. I need food, okay? I need love in my life, okay? I, I need people, I need human interaction, and I also need to win. If you don't have success in your life, you will lose discipline, you will lose activity, you will lose contacts, and you will not be consistent. You will not have them. This is the vital part of success. This is why I'm pounding to you. The only trick in this universe, if there is a trick at all, is you must be successful. Success is not an option. It is your duty, it is your obligation, it is your responsibility. 2022, if it's gonna be good for you and your family, if it's gonna be great for you and your family, it is because you demand success this year. Mm -hmm. And that means you demand success in your relationships, in your finances, and in your money. I disregard my feelings. Like, like my feelings, you, you know, feelings are overrated in our society. Like, you, you, you literally sound you, like me. <laughs>
they're, they're, you're, you're, they're, 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 they're going to mislead you. They're not, I've got to follow my gut. No, no, I don't even know what you're talking about. You, most people don't even know where their gut is. Their gut, your gut is a, 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 it's a stomach. It's called a stomach, okay? It's not designed to lead you. It's designed to digest food. So, so I, I don't, I follow the data. Mm-hmm. Right and and my emotions, my emotions, fear would keep me from doing. Uh, fear has kept me from doing. I should be, I should be a billionaire eight or nine times right now. What is it still? Fear, doing? fear kept me from doing these. The deals I'm doing today, fear kept me from doing twenty years ago. So, what were you actually afraid of? I, I was afraid. I, I lacked confidence in in the data. I didn't. I didn't trust the data. I knew. I have known for years this little space that I'm in. Um, I mean, it's so many different places, but particularly in the real estate, I've known for years that there was going to be a massive shift in America, particularly, and maybe around the world, to where people will no longer buy homes and they will live, they will, they will lease where they live mm-hmm. and they will move around the country and their mobility will become a big thing. Mm-hmm. And I knew that, I knew that, but I did, I should have put every penny, I should have borrowed more money, I should, I should own 40,000 units down, not uh, 7,000. Mm. So maybe maybe seventy. I could be one of the biggest landowners in America today had I followed my in, my my data, my instincts that was backed by data, mm-hmm. rather than my feelings and listening to the numb nuts around me that are like, don't do it, don't take the risk, you don't need to, you already have enough. All you're going to do is like all that input from other people. You know, we I bought a I bought a plane uh, maybe three or four years ago, and I've, I've taken a bunch of heat about the plane because people are like, oh, he's showing off his plane. Look, if you had a guy, if you had a jet, you would show it off too. And if you didn't show it to people, uh, shame on you. Like, it's inspiration for most people, not envy. Right. For most people, they're like, dude, that inspires me. Uh, Mark Wright was here yesterday. Mm-hmm. He was on. Uh, you, you know, Mark. I've. Was the, what show was he on? He was on Apprentice. He was the Apprentice from oh, Lord Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he flew with me from Cardiff to uh, London last year. I put him on the plane. He says, Grant, you ruined my whole life putting me on that plane. I can't think. Like, every time I get on a plane now, I'm like, oh, my God, I need to have fly private. It, it, it is a light, It is a ruiner. And this is what, like, if I inspire people to think bigger, that, that is one of my goals because that has been the big ruin of my life, that I didn't think big enough the whole time. The big, single biggest regret I have in my life, I played it small for at least 35 years. Mm-hmm. Influenced by society, education, friends, even friends with good intentions, family members that love me, you know, they're, they're the wrong people to let the, the you know, the falconry I did yesterday, the, the, one of these birds, the peregrine, pair of, pair of something, moves at 200 miles an hour, makes an aerial strike, kills on contact, like, it's like, wow, man. It only, had, it only, it only does three things in its life. It either kills you, gets killed by you or has sex with you. You guys have to learn this finance game. It's a different game than your, your moms and dad, uncles and aunts and your gramps mm-hmm. played. Okay. They were trying to pay everything off. They were trying to earn money. You really, in, in, in today's society, you don't really want to earn money. You have to do that in the beginning, but what you want to do is you want to get money or equity. You really want money to become equity mm-hmm. and you want the equity to go up. Elon Musk posted or tweeted Sunday. He's like, I know there's a lot of talk about the capital gains tax. He said, but you guys need to understand. And there's a lot of talk about billionaires paying taxes. He's like, you guys need to understand. I don't earn income. I can, I only pay taxes when I sell shares of my Tesla. And, and, and so like people need to understand that's the game. You know, my dad wanted to earn more money. Mm-hmm. My dad wanted to get into the middle class. My dad wanted a better job. My dad wanted to have more money so he could buy a house, so he could pay it off. He could he could buy life insurance for the family. He could pay that off. He could uh, have money left over for a savings account or a money market or, you know, stuff, right? But, but you see, that's not the game, guys. The game is to study the top, the top wealthiest people in the world. And what they're doing is they're they're getting Jay Z talks about equity. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, you going you going for the advance, I'm going for the equity, you know. And and when you're on the up, when you're trying to get up, you're trying to get that advance. You want the bag so bad that we never learn how to keep it, and then we never learn how to multiply. 
I'm out. I have one income in the beginning. And, and what do I need? What do I need in addition to one income? I need a second income that I ideally don't have to work for. Okay. I don't want the second income to take attention from the first income. This is where people make a big mistake. They go out and get one income. They bust in their ass to get one income. And then they go invest in a second thing, start a second company. And the second company makes the first income half the income because they don't pay attention to it anymore. I wanted my first income to grow, my second income to take zero attention from me. So what I did was I took money from the first, threw it in real estate, like I'm showing you in the back here, that's playing on my TV right now. This is a deal we're doing right now. Put the money in the real estate. I don't lose my money. I know it's not going to go down in value. It's supported by cash flow. And three, I just wait for the growth of rent. So all we buy is and, and this is why I would say no to people on Bitcoin right now and Ethereum, any of the coins. Number one, you could lose your money. If, 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 if you're just getting started, you don't lose money, man. <laughs> Number two, you're not getting income. None of the coins pay income. Crypto does not pay income. And if you're 25, 35 years old, you need income, not just a score. Now, all that being said, how does, how does uh, my real estate compare to crypto or Amazon? Well, I can tell you that that piece of real estate that I'm showing you right there, I'm going to pay $230 million for that. I'm going to sell it for a half a billion dollars. And I'm going to be paid to wait for a, for a 100% return on the total price. But because it's the real estate, I, only, I don't pay the whole price. I'll pay about $70 million for that property. $70 million will become... 500 million, uh, which is about a 6x return with no threat of loss, income while I wait, and great tax advantages. I always thought that I could do something. I, I, I think everybody thinks. Do you think everyone does that? Yeah, I think everybody does. I think every person thinks that they're special. But do you think. If they would, if they would be really honest and not. not I think that they have the thought and then and then they're like, I can't tell anybody that. Because that why people will judge them. Well, they will judge them. They, yeah. they will judge them. Like your parents will tell you you're special until you start acting like you're special and then they want to medicate you. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, you're so special, you know? He's so special, right? And, and, then, and then, then special becomes a problem. Somewhere between, I don't know, eight years old and 15, special takes on a different meaning than if, than if you're 24 months old. And then, and then it becomes a problem for the adults, mm -hmm. right? So I think everyone is special. I think if everybody got really quiet and anything, you could say anything, they, everybody would be like, yeah, dude, I got this special little thing. I got this superpower. I got this, you know, this thing. And then what happens is it gets squelched. For me, I squelched it so hard. I suppressed it and pushed it down so Why? hard. Be because, because I was told to. Like, it was not... The, the my surroundings did not like me exhibiting my my special right so so you know because because I was awkward with special mm -hmm. like in the beginning you don't know how to use it yeah. so for me I've always been very uh, rough uh, I was in Dubai and this lady says oh my god I love meeting this guy she was I, sh I saw her write an article about me I love meeting this guy he's a bit rough <laughs> But, but, and I've always been that. I've always been a very kind of, the edges are jagged. Do you think there's a reason for that? Because I, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out mm. and, and still be me mm. without, without suppressing who I am, right? So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm very playful. Uh, I'm immature. I, I, I love pranks. Uh, I like having fun more than I like anything. Like I want to have fun, but I want the fun. But but then I then I'm, I become very serious when it's time to work. So I go from this very playful person to this extremely intense. Uh, Hard working. It, like like it, 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 can, it can happen in, in a in a in a micro of a second. Yeah. yeah. That we could be you know screwing around doing something dumb to. Okay, now we're in a deal. Mm. And the phone's on, and I, like I'm in the deal now. Do you think that adaptability has helped you get to where you are? Yeah, I think it's helped me and hurt me though, because yeah. it, because it's very confusing for people, even people very close to me. I get it. Yeah. So I could, I remember it reminds me of a time when uh, Elena and I, my wife, 
she went, she bought something. I forget what it was. I said, how much was that? And she's like, I don't know. I said, find out how much it was. You got to know what things cost. Because mm. that bothered me. Like, I, I don't know. And then she told me, I'm like, Helena, that, that was ridiculous. We, we didn't need it. It's the, you know, I could have got a better deal, blah, blah, blah. It, 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 it was no money. I don't know. It was 500 bucks or something. Literally, three minutes later, I was negotiating a deal and bought it for $62 million or something. Something ridiculous. So I went from being micromanaging, probably incorrectly, mm -hmm. over 500 bucks to spending $60, $60 million. And, she, and she, it was confusing for her. It's confusing for the people around you. You know, when you're making decisions like on your whiteboard saying, you know what, I'm going to throw away my main business and I'm going to go away, I'm going to go for this other business, it, it, it scares people when you start changing. People don't get wealthy diversifying. They don't There's accumulate not, wealth. They may preserve it. by They by preserve it. Later, yeah. later they might do it. Uh, by the way, Warren Buffett would, if Warren Buffett could own all of Coca-Cola or AIG, which is what he started with, he would. He can't. Uh, he he has of all his investments, four of his investments, four represent seventy five percent of his entire portfolio. Mark Cuban said that uh, diversification is for idiots. Uh, Elon Musk has three investments in his portfolio, all of which uh -huh. he runs. Steve Jobs had two investments: Pixar and Apple. It is not true. Only the financial planner, only the financial planner, who might not even be a millionaire would suggest that you diversify or, or Wall Street or the banks. A banker will tell you to diversify, but there's no banker has got $4 billion worth of assets. So I got $4 billion worth of this real estate right here. And, and you know, I have $2 million worth of uh, Bitcoin. So I only have the Bitcoin because somebody gave it to me. I got, that's, a, that's, I still, a, that's a big gift, Grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they, yeah, yeah. So, so, I, and I had it a little bit once I understood it, but or partially understood it. But this stuff right here, look, I know, I know that month cash is garbage. Euros, pounds, pesos, whatever you want to call it, Spanish dollars. It's all garbage. It's completely made up. Um, you know, I, I, I like the argument for crypto. I don't like the fact that when you're on the come up and you're 35 years old, what you need more than anything is income. You need a flow of income that you can depend on so that if you're not working or can't work or something happens, you still have income to pay for your rent or pay for your food because you still got to eat. And most people, I haven't seen anybody going to the, food, to, to the, to the store and trading their crypto for some whole foods. You mean there's no yield in crypto? There's, there's no, no yield. Cash flow. Exactly. Okay. There's no cash flow. And now, if you're a gambler, dude, and you want to put it all, oh, I would never put it all in. Why wouldn't you? See, this is the question I ask people. Dude, if you know for sure crypto's a play, if you know it's going to the moon, the Dogecoin, if you know for sure it's going to go to 100,000, then put everything in it. You see, I'm not that sure. So because I'm not that sure, I can't make that big bet. And the way to create real wealth is to make massive bets. If particularly, particularly with your story about, hey, I don't want to wait till I'm 90 years old. And Warren, by the way, Warren started when he was 50. He didn't make any real money till he was 50 years old. But I would just tell people, look, if you want to make massive money, then you need to put, you need to go all in first on you, second on your business, not on real estate or crypto. The best return in the world is your business. The best return in the world is an idea. I got an idea. I'm going to write a book. I go out and sell a million copies of a book. There's no better return than that because it came from nothing, right? It came from the mud. Um, now, once you got money coming in from the book sales, how do you protect the money? Okay. Well, you, you go all in on one stock. Uh, you could go buy Amazon today for $3,500. $3, but I'll tell you, this piece of real estate right here will make more money for me and my family than Amazon will ever make. Because what will happen with this real estate that you can't do with Amazon and you can't do with Bitcoin, I'm going to wait 10 years on this piece of real estate. I'm going to take all my capital out of the deal. I'm going to refinance it, still own the asset and get my down payment back. So I'll get my $70 million back or $7 million, whatever the number is. This is a big, big deal. So it's 
$230 million, I could take it down to 20 million or I could take it down to two. It's the same math all the way across the board. It's just different zeros. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. No, yeah. no, but, but this asset class, this particular asset class allows the everyday person to create wealth in a way that Wall Street has been doing for years, which is I buy an asset. It goes up in value because the, because the income goes up without my effort. And then when it goes up in value, I refinance it, grab my initial monies out of it. Now I have that money back. It's a non-taxable event worldwide, by the way. Worldwide, that becomes a non-taxable event. I refinance the property, it continues to cash flow and pay me money, but I have no money in it. This is the true wealth formula uh, which, where, where we're using leverage against an increased assets value going forward. I am not going to invest with you if you don't know what you're talking about. Where is it? I don't know. What's the job growth? I don't know. What's the rent? I don't know. What's next door? I don't know. What's the NOI? I don't know. Okay, no, but I'm like, next. Who's serious? Number three, not knowing your underwriting. You got to know your underwriting. It's better for you when we meet Wednesday night. It's better that you don't know your underwriting with me than when you do it with the bank. You do not want to mess up with the bank. They're not going to forgive you once. One time, they're going to be like, leave this guy alone. They never forgive you for it. You will ne they will never, you'll never get in their good graces if you mess up with them one time because they're cowards. That's not their money they're lending. Uh, number four, you got to buy through every cycle. You cannot wait for the bust out. You got to buy through the good times. You got to buy through the bad times. You got to buy all the time. So before COVID, I was buying. During COVID, I was buying. After COVID, I was buying. So when I'm on a phone call with somebody, I was on a phone call today, I said, guys, they said, what did you buy during COVID? $600 million worth of stuff. They're like, dang, man. Like, it shows tremendous confidence that I can go do a deal through uncertain times. Number five, buying too small. Buying too small is a problem. It's a headache. It's a pain in the ass, okay? Six, being talked out of deals. Leave the people around you alone. Get somebody that's pro on this thing. Don't talk to your stockbroker or your financial planner. Do not talk to your dentist or your chiropractor about buying real estate. Let them crack your back and then get off the table and go back to buying some real estate. Uh, number seven, not looking at enough deals. These are the mistakes you're gonna make. You're not gonna look at enough deals. You're gonna look at a couple and quit. quit keep looking at deals. They're gonna stack. The, the information is gonna stack. I remember one of my jobs was I was in a produce department in Lake Charles, Louisiana in a grocery store. And I was, I was, I was telling Jared about produce the other day. I was, I hated this job. The, the, the guys tell me, look man, when the bananas get some bruises on them, you gotta move them to the front. I, I didn't know I was learning something. Fast forward 50 years. When, when, when an event's getting close to being expiring, move that event to the front. You understand? As you're losing time because your product's gonna get bruised and expire, move it to the front. Like, I didn't know when I was 16 years old that I was learning. When I was stacking the shelves and they taught me how to stack the Cheerios and the Brillo pads and the Tide and they told me how to pull it to the front, keep it squared up, I didn't know I was learning to pack and control my environment. When you look at a lot of deals, this deal is gonna teach you about that deal, is gonna teach you about that deal, is gonna teach you about that deal. And then one day you're gonna be like, this deal right here is sick because of these deals. And you're gonna know for sure because you knew those, you, because these gave you the data you needed to buy that one, okay? One deal can what? Number eight, I need to write a book. One deal can change your life. So I wanna give you a list of things to drop your drama. No drama! Reduce your risk. How many of you'd like to never lose money on a deal? Check off most of this list and you won't lose money on a deal. Number one, is the location good? The better the location gets, the better off you are. I should have asked Robert that. Would you rather pay a higher price for a better location or a lower price for a worse location? I think I know what he would tell me. Is it affordable? Affordable to who? To the tenant, not to you. You're not buying a box of groceries here. Is it affordable to the tenant based on what else I can buy in that area, okay? New York City rents should be higher than, uh, than, than uh, Miami rents. 
Okay, if if I'm in if I'm at Fifth Avenue, right, and the and every condo is twelve million dollars, and I can rent there for fifty five hundred bucks a month for a little tiny apartment, or if I go to Silicon Valley and people are being paid two fifty two hundred fifty thousand to work at Facebook as an intern, I can pay nine thousand dollar a month in rent. And those rents, by the way, you have 1970, 1970 built product. It was built in 1970. Elena, were you, were you born in 1970? She wasn't even born yet. And there's apartments that were built in 1970, 50 plus, 52 years old, that rent for $9,000 a month. One bedroom, 800 square feet, old ass kitchen, bad floors, bad cabinets, leaky faucets that rent for nine grand a month. And somebody bought those years ago, I guarantee they probably only paid 9,000 for the unit. And every month they collect another nine grand if they've been there long enough, okay? Is it, it, so it could be affordable, right? Even though it's 9,000. You take the rents in Miami at 1,500, 2,800, anywhere in between 15 and 2,800. You take that same asset, you take that and transport it to New York City, those rents are 25,000 bucks a month. Take the same property, push it to Singapore. Singapore rents are 80% higher than the United States of America, and you guys complain about the rents. You guys complain about the rents because the locals never change the market. You wanna write this down. The locals never change the market, the outsiders do. Why are apartments superior? This is what I want you guys to hear. My flipper, my flipper friend in Austin, the gentleman with the Cardone Capital hat. Number one, housing is a basic need. Number two, apartments are an economic preferred choice. Number three, apartments are the preferred choice of housing today. People want to rent as an option. They want the mobility and the freedom to do so, okay? Number four, it cannot be easily replaced. These 300 unit complexes that you're seeing being built in the Raleigh's and the Carolinas all across the Eastern seaboard. Once it's there, they're gonna build another one across the street. Sooner or later, it's all gone. Houston, Texas, this year, consumed 50% of all their inventory, their apartment inventory, in the first five months of the year. This is called absorption. Absorption is how fast new units are being consumed, okay, or purchased. They can't be easy to replace. What happens if inflation happens to glass, metal, lumber? We've had like crazy lumber inflation. What about, I can't get workers to build a 300 unit complex. The housing manufacturers, they're not building houses anymore. They're building apartment uh, complexes. Number five, it has the potential to produce and provide cash flow for the investors. Number six, bankable asset, very, very easy to get debt on, way easier than most every other asset class. Uh, number seven, it's got a multiplier effect. Two things on the multiplier effect, if you're taking notes. One, rents can go up, okay, and the leverage from the property. This is the multiplier effect. So if these rents go up 200 bucks or 300, or 3,000, whatever number you want. The rents go up times 12, times 10, if you're gonna hold for 10 years. And what if they keep bouncing? Is there any chance the rents are gonna go up? The first property I bought was in San Diego, California, 1998, okay? We were moving the rents, two and $300 every month. Leverage, leverage able assets, okay? You wanna make a note here. To create wealth, you wanna buy assets, that appreciate in value enough, refinance those assets at new higher valuation, pull out all their equity to create a non-taxable event, meaning I could get $50 million and not pay taxes, and still own assets. So if I can just play this game one building at a time, I get a building, wait three or four years, increase the rent, get my money out, keep the building. Next, go add another building with the money that I got from the first building. You with me? And I just keep moving up creating wealth for yourself. You cannot create wealth without investing. Doesn't matter how hard you work. Nine, number nine, you have multiple exits on this stuff. I could sell it, I could refinance it. That's called an exit, no exit. Grab my money, but I don't exit the property. Okay, number 10, historic doubles every decade. Apartments double every 10 years in, my, in Florida. Every 10 years, two, a, a, a million dollar deal doubles, two million. It's exceeded any of our expectations. It's just beautiful. I mean, I would pick helping people over everything. Over everything. So, so uh, only because my heart kind of pulls me to help people because I wanted help when I was a kid. Yeah. And um, I didn't have anybody to help me, and it was frustrating. And I just, I, I have this personal promise 
that I made years ago that if I ever made it, I would, um, I would stay revealed mm -hmm. and I would help people. I would show them what I'm doing. So, um, and that thing pulls at me. It probably costs me, you know, a lot of time and energy because, but, but it pulls me. It's just, it's kind of like a mission. Steve Harvey told me once, he's like, you know, Steve Harvey, he's got this beautiful saying about he, his career is what pays his bills, but his mission is what pays his heart or something like that. He says oh, wow. it much better than I do. Sketchy people can't see everything. You know, I've, I've, I've learned this in my own life and with other people. Like, people that take shortcuts can't see very well. And, and, and like, you, you already, you can see everything I'm doing. You see the e-commerce. You see the traditional. You see the, the sales calls that we make. You see what I'm doing on social. You see the real estate place. You see everything I'm doing. So another person could study everything that I'm doing and not see everything I'm doing because they're sketchy. And they're like stuck right here. They're criminals. They're, 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 t they're taking shortcuts and they're, they're looking for shortcuts and all they see is shortcuts. They, don't, they can't see everything. So the more honest the person is, the more they can see. And the less honest a person is, the less they can see. It's, it's why a thief, a thief you know, robs a house and steals less than he could have made just servicing the same exact house. Right. The guy, the guy would have given more money to like take care of him if he could see. Instead, he saw a watch and took the watch. And I say this all the time. Like, if you love, if you learn to love the thing you hate, you might find a big gift in it. And for me, I didn't like sales. I hated it. I tried selling when I was 17 years old, lost a job. 18, I tried again part-time during the summer, lost the job. 19 years old, lost the job. I had had five experiences in sales and hated every one of them. All different industries. I just kept moving industries thinking, okay, it'll be different. This will be easy to sell. I hated sales. I hated talking to people. I, I particularly hated the beginning, the rapport building. You know, I'm, I'm not good at breaking ice. Like Ron Secco, he can talk to anybody. I can't do that. I can't go into a room um, I can speak to 35,000 people, but I can't go into a room and start warming it up. Uh, it's just I'm uncomfortable. So the, the point I'm trying to make is when I was 25, the only job I could get was a sales job. And I said, hey, you got to decide that you're going to get good at this, even if you hate it, yeah. because you can't lose another job. It would have been my sixth firing. And I'm like, I cannot lose another job. I did, by the way, get fired from that place. <laughs> But they never got rid of me because I kept selling stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so every time they'd fire me, I'd, be, I'd go back and sell something. They'd be like, okay, you can stay, <laughs> right, another, stay another day until, <laughs> until the next time you mess up something. So, you know, I went from hating sales to committing to it to becoming now known as like one of the greatest living salespeople on the planet. Yeah. So uh, in, in the things you hate. Yeah. Like where does the hate come from? Mm. Like the things that you hate. The things that just grind you out, like you're like, just bug you, there's probably, if you just stay with it mm. and look, just move to the side a little bit and look behind it, there might be some so, great gifts. So there. spirituality is the number one, one most important thing to me in my life. Like my, before my wife and my kids is my understanding of God. Yeah. And, and my dreams come from that connection and that understanding. And my, my dreams and my goals are not really financial. It's potential. So, so, so when I talk about, you know, people ask me, the, the, probably the most painful question I get is, when is enough enough? And I'm like, man, you guys ought to check in with God on that. Yeah. Right? Because, because my, my potential is what I'm going after. It's not, it's not some number. I got a guy asking me about my net worth. I'm like, dude, what, what, it's a stupid question. It's an ego, it's an ego, it's an ego thing, right? I, yeah. What I'm interested in is my potential, possibility discovery and 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 for me that potential is the thing that strings me and god and that potential is my dreams it's like what what could i do what's possible and the the other thing is about the blessing you know you you hear people i was in atlanta i'm like man i'm blessed and everybody's like oh yeah praise the lord i'm like yeah everybody's blessed everybody's blessed i've never met somebody that's not blessed most people are not proving it though they're blessed and not validating God every day. Wow. So uh, I, I have a very, very powerful, very strong, and very clear uh, understanding of my relationship with God, and it is first and foremost with me. 
other people won't understand it, right? But 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 I every every day every day every deal undoing a deal, like I've undone deals. Hey guys, this deal is no longer good for me, and that was me at my my highest ethical. What do you mean? You got a deal? We got a deal. You signed a contract. That's right. And now we're going to undo this deal. And I'm going to undo it. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to figure it out. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, hey, this deal's not good for me. And if it's not good for me, it's not good for my family. It's not good for my future. It's not good for my, my ability to give to charities. It's not good for you either. So rather than me just walking away, why don't we just rework the deal so that we're both happy and everybody wins? Very difficult thing to do. But you allow that because to be your another person, driver. because another person might be bound by that agreement. They're like, no, no, we have a deal. I have to do what I said I'm going to do because they're bound by some rule that they made some agreement. Hey, if that agreement's no longer good for you, no God would want you to continue. What you'd want to do is communicate, which is harder to do. Yeah, you know. So, so the ability for my wife and I to communicate about anything, even if it's tough, and it's you know, it's. You know, ha- 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 believing in God is more than just believing in God. It takes courage to, to go out every day and validate it. Because if you actually believe, you have to do. And you ought to do well, too. And yeah. if you ever, you know, to, to me in my mind, like, you know, if I, have, if I have a good, really strong, good working relationship with God, I would be successful at everything. Physically, in my marriage, in business, with my customers, online. I would have good reviews, not bad reviews. Yeah, like you ought to have the whole package. I don't think I don't. I don't think God had a partial package. I think it was probably the whole deal. And the other thing is the work thing. You know, like I see a lot of people that believe in God that don't work. You know, they're like, oh yeah, but you know, they're taking two and three days off. God don't even take that much time off. <laughs> <laughs> he takes one day off. Yeah. And look what he did before he took the day off. We got to look at your vehicle. What vehicle are you in right now? Do you have any recurring revenue? Do you have any opportunities outside of what's going on right now? What are your assets and liabilities? Take advantage of it. If you're over 50 years old and you're just trying to figure out, man, what am I going to do? Because, look, time is critical now. You don't have a lot of time. You know that better than I do. You got to figure this game out, okay? If you're committed, number one, number two, we got to look at the vehicle you're in. We got to look at do you have any other additional income or recurring income or repetitive income, passive income, opportunities. There's so many that exist in the world today. If you don't understand YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, all these things, like I didn't understand any of this when I was 51 years old. I had no idea how to market myself. I had never branded myself. I'd never done video like this before. I didn't know if I did a video, what I was supposed to do the video on. I did not have a product lineup. I was in one tiny uh, vertical. Uh, I'd heard somebody say once, uh, the riches are in the niches, and my niche was so tight, I wasn't right. I was wrong, because I was dependent upon this many people. I had to serve them, satisfy them, kneel down to them, and kiss the ring every day, and I got tired. If you're tired of kneeling down, kissing the ring, begging, putting up with bull from customers, and, you, and you're, you're 50 years old, you're over 50 years old, and you're like, okay, I gotta get recurring revenue, I gotta get something that's indestructible, I gotta figure out how to do this without spending a bunch of money, I can't disrupt my main flow right now, you got a job right now, you can't walk away from it, I get it, but you're running out of time. Okay, you got what? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? You want to start enjoying your, some of the money, some of the production? 80, maybe 90%, maybe 95% without being a doomsdayer. 95% of the people in the United States of America, the wealthiest country on the planet, are suffering. No money, no freedom, no choices, can't leave their job, tied down. And they, most of those 95%, most of them, some of them are earning big wages, 250 grand, 80 grand, 90 grand. Maybe you're in this group, 60 grand, 58,000, 78,000, 112,000, whatever number you're earning. If you look at the, 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 the money left over at the end of the year, end of the month, or end of the, the week, there's not a lot of money left over. 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 55% of Americans have no money in a savings account, okay? 90% of all the wealth in this country is owned by about less than 10% of all the people in this country. Listen to what I just said. 
you and I have been doing something wrong. We are using information that is outdated and no longer efficient for the kind of economy we're in today. Got all kind of disruption going on. You got to start thinking different about saving money, investing money, real estate, crypto, and how you how you uh, do do you go over uh, many many investments or do you go hard on one? We need to look at what you have been taught about money that may be holding you back. That may not be the thing you need to be doing any longer. I'm here in Las Vegas right now. You know, when you walk in these casinos, almost everybody knows how to play blackjack. Almost everybody knows how to play the little games here. They even have books how to play the games. Uh, the guy gets a six. He's got a 16 and the dealer's got a six. He's like, I'm not going to hit that card. And he sits there and he gets beat all night because he's playing by the book. I figured out two things. I figured out, oh, excuse the language. I've been doing everything wrong and thought it was right. I was doing exactly what the book said. Save your money, invest in mutual funds, plan for retirement, buy some life insurance. Um, what was the other one? Work hard. Oh yeah, you gotta work hard. And you do, by the way. That's not a myth. But I know a lot of people that are working hard that end up with nothing. Like my parents. My dad worked hard, he died at 52 years old. Heart blew up in his chest from stress and overwork. Probably for not taking care of himself enough because he was out there grinding, just pounding, pounding every day because he wanted to do one thing, take care of his family. Probably same thing you want to do. Then my mom was left to raise five kids and only had a little bucket of money sitting over there in a savings account. So she's clipping coupons, terrified to spend anything, scared of the, if the plumbing breaks, scared if the roofer comes over, scared, terrified every day to spend one penny because she knew she was depleting the account that would take care of the family. Look, if you're experiencing any of these same things today, don't feel bad about yourself. Like you're not, you're not like, oh, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you is you have the wrong information. You got the wrong information. It's not because you're lazy. It's not because you're stupid. It's because you have the wrong data. One of the things that to me is the most difficult thing in my entire career is becoming a top producer. Because the moment you become a top producer, you become susceptible to thinking you have the life. Uh, I grew up in a little town in Louisiana, a little small town, about 60,000 people. Uh, you probably hear the accent. And uh, I, I grew up in a middle class, uh, middle class family. My, my, my dad died when I was 10 years old. My mother raised us. And my mother constantly told me how proud I should be of myself. How many of you got a mother like that? You should be so proud of yourself, okay? Uh, every, every time, my mom was my best friend and every time I would have a success, it didn't matter whether I was 18 years old or 48 years old. Anytime I had a success, she was the first person I called. I wouldn't call my girlfriend, wouldn't call my wife, wouldn't call any of the, the people that were closest to me. I'd call my mom and say, Mom, you never believe I just bought a real estate deal. I started this company. I bought my first real estate deal. It's 38 units, it's $4 million. And she'd be like, that's awesome. I love you just the way you are. And I'm like, okay, okay, thanks. She told me that a thousand times. How many of you had a parent tell you, I love you? That's great. That's great you made 160 grand last year. But I love you just the way you are. How many hear that? Okay, that's right out of the 10X rule. I don't know if you know that. That's right out of the four actions. Anybody know what action it is? Average. Average. I'm doing well. Okay? There's four levels of action. Number one is I do nothing. If I rewrote this book, I would take that out. That's actually impossible. To do nothing at all is impossible. Try doing it right now. <laughs> to do nothing means you had to make a decision to do something and not do it. This is actually not true. I wouldn't put it in the book if I rewrote it. The second level of action is um, to retreat. This is what most people do, by the way. How many had a commitment to work out today? And didn't? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yo, yo, shit, I, I was up late. Whatever. You came up with it. Whatever reason, I'm going to make the call. By the way, any retreat in life, any single retreat is a discipline and a commitment to retreat when it matters. So, so every time you make a decision, you just need to be aware that what are you doing here, okay? There's only four things you can do in any given day, right? You could do nothing, you could retreat, or you could do this, average. Now, I know you guys are being told that you're the top. You're the top. You're the best. You made it to Miami. But I'm just going to tell you right now, ain't, ain't not a person in this room is above number three. 
no, I'm not there. Okay, and I know how much I'm grinding every day, how much I'm pushing every day, how, 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 many, how many hours I put into a day. What's the maximum number of hours you can do in a day? Not if you add people. If you added people, you gotta think beyond the 24th thing. Once you guys get committed, once you get committed, then you will come up with solutions outside the physical universe. Okay, you're, you're already doing that. Your space is, your space is bizarre, okay? Here, here there's a bunch of people in the room that, that, like, I don't know anything about technology. I'm 61 years old. I was born in 1958. I, I am supposed to be outside of that moment of technology. Yet I'm probably one of the top five social media people in the world today. Banging on Instagram and Snapchat and LinkedIn and Google Plus that'll go away. Using all these mechanisms to try to get attention so that I can operate at this level 10x thing, this massive level that is always changing by the way. You can't 10x something. People are like, man, I'd write the book. If I wrote the book, I'd write it 11x. I'm like, that's because you don't understand 10x, dude. 10x is a multiplier. It's 10x, which is 100. Okay? So what, what I do, what I did in, it, when Lehman collapsed, I wrote the 10x rule. And I wrote the book because I realized I had done something wrong. That book was written for me. And the reason, when I closed the book, the reason I was like, eh, whatever, I had figured out what I had done wrong, okay? I had to embrace the, 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 the idea that three or four million dollars in a bank and a house paid for and two cars and a marriage and I got it better than everybody else and my mama loves me just the way I am was all this, this middle class, this American, particularly here in America, how many of you live in America? Okay, in America, the middle class, it is the sleeping chamber on planet Earth. Okay, people come here, people come here, they come from India and China, come to here to get a middle class. Dude, I don't want anything to do with this. Okay, you're middle class, you will not change the world. You might change your house. You might change the education your little kids get, okay? They get to go to Texas A&M, big deal, right? He, he told me that he went to Texas. I said, oh, that had to screw you up bad, just going to a college. Why, because what are they manufacturing college? They, ma they manufacture average people at college. So, so I want to challenge you today, okay? I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you today to start thinking, hey, wait a minute, am I even a top producer? Three things you got to know about money, and the same three rules hold true for attention. Number one, you got to get it. You don't need to make it. It's already been made. There's trillions and trillions of dollars. There's more money on this planet than there are iPhones, okay? Endless supply. Okay, it's like, it's garbage, by the way. You need to understand it's garbage. Once I get it, the thing to do is once I get it, now I don't want to lose it. How do I not lose it? I take it and I convert it to something more valuable than money. So as fast as I can, I'm going to take this cash that I earned. I don't spend it ever. Never spend this money. No matter how big the bag is, I take the entire earned bag and I dump it into something that becomes that will produce passive income for me. The only thing I ever spend is the $100 that comes out of the building, not the bag that I earn because of my talent. I take my talents, I get paid for them, I shift it into the building, the money goes away. Money can't be lost now. It's been converted to concrete, glass, steel, tenants, leases, uh, real property, okay? It goes up in value over time. This gets destroyed over time. It can be, get burnt, it can get torn, it can get uh, lost, it can get uh, stolen. So I want to get rid of this illiquid. I want to get illiquid in the building, convert it to something real, and then I want to wait. When I get paid passive income, this passive income is not taxed. It's only taxed. It's taxed up a small, tiny percentage of what earned income is. So I keep most of it. And this is how I live. I live off of this money and, and I could spend all of this or I could take this and start investing in more buildings. The way you talk so to me. Get it, Go get ahead. it, keep it. Number two, you got to keep it. How do I keep it? I don't save it at the bank. When you put it at the bank, the bank is going to tax it. Cash is taxed. Yeah. All cash is taxed. 
Okay, cash is not king. Cash flow is king. So what you want is you want this. You want passive income. And the third thing you want to do is you want to figure out how it can multiply. That building will multiply over time. There's nobody that's going to tell me that building will not be more money. Right location, like, like the cities we're buying in, Austin, Houston, Dallas, Orlando, Tampa, uh, the Carolinas, Nashville, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, freaking on fire, Savannah, Georgia, anything in the in the smiley part of the United States where New York, when the vaccine, when they came out last night and said, hey, we're mandating, I got calls from three buddies. I'm fucking done with New York. I thought they were going to change. They're not. New York is going to feed that building. 20% of our tenants right now are from New York City. 10% are from California, moving from LA all the way over to Miami. So people are tired of the bullshit, man. And, 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 and when they're tired of that, what they do is they move. And when they move, they rent first. They don't yeah. buy first. You better get excited now. Because if you're not going to get excited now, nobody will give you this money. Nobody will give you this money. Money follows attention. How much attention can I get in the marketplace is where money goes. Money does not go to the best product ever. Money does not go to the best product. Money does not go to the happiest place either. Money goes to where attention goes. Whoever gets the most attention gets the most money. Action, massive action, has always worked. It's proven itself for thousands of years. This is not a new concept. You show me somebody, and we know their name, anybody, anybody in the, in the, in the room, any famous person that you can think of, anybody, that we would both know. You say, I'm going to mention their name, and Grant will know who that is. Give me a name of one person. Tiger Woods. Massive action. Persistent massive action. Okay? Okay, how many people were watching the, the Open yesterday? Yeah, exactly. Why? Because Tiger was in it. Attention. Money follows attention. Money follows attention. How much attention can you get? Even bad attention. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. What Tiger went through in the last decade helped him. You got more white people pulling for Tiger Woods Right? They're like, tiger, grown white men, tiger. And we say there's division in this country. Tiger, I love tiger. Right? Why? Because they love a comeback, man. The guy got a lot of attention. Okay, who else? Give me another name. Oh, my God. I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be this kind of meeting. <laughs> if I didn't know it was going to be this kind of meeting, I'd charge you double. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Everybody knows him, okay? Money follows attention. Success and power follow attention. Okay, you can not like the guy, but could you handle that much heat every day? Could you handle that many people not liking you every day? Because if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be a real leader, okay, if you're going to be at the top of the food chain kind of leader, people aren't going to like you. Money's garbage. It's garbage. It's not, it's not really what you want because it gets taxed heavily. So, and this is another thing. The ball players don't understand this. Most of the middle class doesn't understand it. The guy making 50 racks a year doesn't. The guy making 500 racks a year doesn't understand it. The guy working at Facebook doesn't understand. He knows how to code. He don't know how to beat the tax man. And the way to beat the tax man is with real estate. It is the last venue where, and I'm not talking about a house. I'm talking about buying like this piece of real estate right behind me right there. That's, that piece of real estate is $260 million. Now I didn't start with that. My first deal was my first deal was a three million dollar deal. I made five million on it, one deal, and paid no taxes. And when I did that first deal, man, I did I put three hundred fifty grand down. I borrowed it from my mom and a brother, uh, and made five. I turned three hundred fifty grand into five million dollars, and didn't have to go through the bullshit that I was going through every single day. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is a game, man. When I went to file my taxes, the guy showed me how not to pay taxes on it. I'm like, okay, I'm good. And I've been doing that. I now have $4 billion worth of real estate. I started with three hundred grand, borrowed money. I got $4 billion. This deal right here is a quarter of a billion. And what I've learned over the last 25 years is this game is on, it's on, it's a rigged game and it's on stack. It's all, it's all stacked against the little guy and the middle guy. And so what I decided to do was, was uh, I promised my mom when I was 15 years old, Dorian, I said, if I ever make it, I'm going to help the little guy out. 
because I grew up with a single mother, five kids. She was freaking frightened all it. She never got a shot at that stuff. You know, if my family got to buy a house that they had, we had, you got to pay for, if we could buy a house and pay it off, that was freaking like, that was the American dream. That ain't a dream, bro. That's prison. That right there behind me, cash flow day one, trophy asset, appreciation two and three and four times. Most of this real estate's been doubling every, every decade. Uh, trophy, institutional quality, great write-offs, everything the wealthy look for in an investment. So I'm buying this deal and then I open it up to my friends and followers on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, $1,000 with $1,000, you can partner with me in that deal. And it's important for everybody to know like, oh my God, this guy's going to raise money from everybody. I could have gotten one company, one bank would have given me the entire amount of money that I'm raising for my friends. One, one bank said, Hey, I'll give you the whole two. I'll give you all the money for the deal. And you, you'd be the partner in the deal. Grant, you run the deal. We'll be the money. And I didn't take the money because I want my friends, my followers, the people on this. I want to give people a shot. So, uh, because you're, you're easier to deal with Dorian. I'd rather you be my partner in the deal than bank of America. In the beginning, when you go to a new land, a new place or a new planet, you have to make investments in, in the environment and hope that, hey, if I keep doing this, if I keep making these deposits, whether it's me going to the gym, I don't know if the gym worked for me this morning. I know if I can stack up enough gym visits, if I go to church enough, hey, man, maybe some of it will rub off on me. I'll become a good guy one day, okay? <laughs> if, if, if I make enough investments in people and human beings and talking to people, well, we were out here shooting some video today, and I'm like, hey, how you guys doing? How you guys doing? How you guys? The only reason I'm doing that is to make investments in people mm. because if I do that often enough, um, I'm practicing, one, ec you know, extroverting myself to communicate to people because everything that I want, everything that's going to be good in my life is going to come through other people. It's not going to come because I sat in a room by myself. It's going to come my wife and I and Michael. And we, we went out into the marketplace and actually moved some people around. Like you're coming to my event now, yeah. right? Yeah, we are. Yeah, exactly. See, what you become is what you will be. Most people are sitting in a student chair too long. You're learning. You're like learning, studying, reading, you know, trying to get information. Dude, the, the, way, to, the way to trick the system is to become something as fast as possible. Don't keep learning. Buy something. This is the easiest, simplest way for somebody to become an investor. I did the deal. I bought the deal with my money, did the research with my money, my time, my energy, my 30 years. I used my cred with the banks and the real estate community to get the deal. That deal is $260 million. Your entire audience could not buy that deal by itself, even if it had the money because it doesn't have the connection. Yep. So I'm paying, I'm buying the deal with my money and my, bank, uh, my, my debt. Then once I buy it and close it, I've taken all this risk out. Because once I buy it and close it, then I offer it up to my audience and say, same price that I pay, you can get in at. $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, whatever number you're comfortable with. So what happens is, one, your money's protected against inflation and deflation, okay, against the disruption and destruction of the dollar, which is what we're, what's happening right now is they are purposely destroying the dollar. The very thing they told you for the last 30 years, you should save and you should, you should, you know, trade your most valuable asset for. They are now destroying the very thing that you've been saving. And they're penalizing you for having it because they pay you nothing to keep it. Understand that, that a thousand, and I'm going to answer your whole question here. Understand that a thousand dollars today at Bank of America or Wells Fargo, let me see, $1,000 today times pays $1.20. Bullshit. Let me see. Yeah, that's $1.20 anyway. Ridiculous. Crazy. Okay. Now, that's before you bought your checks. That's before you started the, the, the checking account. That's before you used the ATM. By the time the end of the year, is your $1,000 probably more like 920 bucks. Probably cost you 80 bucks just to have a checking account. So number one, you become an investor. Number two, you get cash flow every quarter. Number three, I expect that building to be a double or a triple. So I'm paying 260 for the building. If I sell it for 340, we make a double. I think the building is going to sell for 500 million when I sell it. Location's ridiculous. Can't replace it. 
It's 99% occupied right now. It's a trophy quality asset. It's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, one of the hottest markets in the country. And when I sell this, I will be selling it to an institution. And the reason that's important is because most of us that are earning 50 bucks a night, you have to buy the leftovers, man. You know, the, 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 we're buying leftovers. We're buying, we're buying the garbage in the community, the duplex, the single family home. These are the same homes that went back to the banks in 2010. And you don't want to be in that stuff. What you want to be is the trophy stuff that somebody always finds value in. Yep. So I think the return is uh, 5 to 6% in the first year, paid out quarterly. Uh, we pass through the depreciation to you, so you won't be t- paying taxes for the first couple of years on your income. Um, and uh, I think you get a double or a triple uh, off your money. So if you put in ten grand, I think you're looking at your money being twenty or thirty thousand over the next uh, five, six, seven years. I want my employees to stay broke. I don't want employees sitting with cash. Cash means Porsches. And Porsche's mean he's going to be in trouble. Every person I've ever seen work for me that does this stuff, before they get their investments right, they go buy junk, H belts, big watches. They can't afford the new one, the, the, a real Hublot, so they go buy a big you know, $80 watch. Dude, when you start seeing indicators of that, people start playing all that stuff. They're doing bottle service over at Live on the weekends, acting like free money will end up at Live. So, Steve, Steve, when you came to work for me, how much money were you making? Three thousand dollars a month. Three grand a month. Okay, you can't live on three grand a month in Miami. Every day we would tell him, "You cannot live on three grand a month in Miami. It's impossible." Just tell him. So it's impossible. So re- tell people the truth. Is it the truth? Can you live on three thousand dollars in any city in America? Not without fear. You can live on it, but not without fear. And that's what you need to tell your people, folks. You need to leave here if you want your people all on the same page. How many like to have everybody highly motivated? Say yay. How many like to have everybody around you really engaged? How many of you like to be surrounded by friends that are actually talking about, hey, let's all do better, rather than make sense of how they're doing? Okay. How many of you like to pay for the fuel in my plane for us to go someplace. But you can't. And that's a damn shame. Okay? Like, that, that, that's, that should be your goal. Hey, I want Grant to pick me up. Are you going to pick me up in your plane? Like, think that big, folks. Think that big. Get people around you thinking that big, all right? When you go to dinner, don't worry about, hey, guys, okay, uh, let's all throw the card in. <laughs> really? You should be fighting to pay for the bill. The money's out there. It's not your money. It's this. Every business, I have five companies now. We'll do 100 million this year. I started every one of those companies with no money. Zero money, man. Just hustle and grit and courage. I've called on people I didn't want to be with. I've done things I didn't want to do, okay? It is not about doing what you love. It's about doing whatever it takes to make your dreams a reality, to be closed and stay closed. If you're not closed on your product, if you're not buying your own product, why would you expect anybody else to? Man, 400 bucks is a lot of money, your prospect says to you. $400, do it. Listen to me, man. You're 32 years old. You've been trying to save money for 20 years and you had. Do it and do it now. I don't need anything special here. I'm not going to be empathetic. Quit being stupid. Write the check. I don't know if the compliance guy likes that or not. But I know this. Look, if you believe in what you're selling, how many of you believe in what you're selling? Then close the deal. Then close the deal, okay? Learn to close and you'll never be without work. You'll never be without money. You'll have an organization that is booming in affluence. You'll have a pipeline full. You'll have appointments filled up, right? I call it, a, a, a group called me yesterday. I'm actually trying to do a deal with CNBC and the guy says, I'm interested. I said, good, I'll be there tomorrow. Call me back. I'll be, I, I'm flying into New York tomorrow. What am I trying to do right now? By the way, I was supposed to be here today. I'll fly into New York tomorrow. I can be there tomorrow, Mr. Ackerman. Okay, how does that work? I can't do tomorrow. 
I was going to be here anyway. I'm not trying to close the deal. Let me close the deal. I'll figure out how to be in two places at one time later. Right? You, some of you in the room are like, hey, I can see you at 4 o'clock on Tuesday, right? And, and the customer says to you, I'll, I'll see you at 4 o'clock on Tuesday. Too. Let me look at my calendar. Like, like, you're so busy. Dude, that is so old. That is so old. And it's dishonest. It's dishonest, man. You want to see me Tuesday at 4 o'clock? I give you Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Agree to it. Done. Done. I'll call you if something changes. If there's an earthquake between now and next Tuesday, Tuesday morning there's a massive earthquake and I can't be there. You think everybody will understand? Commit first, figure the rest out later. Close the deal right now. Fill your calendar up. Your calendar's got the devil all over it. White space on a calendar and you will meet the devil. You don't need to die, okay? You go two or three days without anything going on, how many of you start having doubts? You're in hell. Oh my God, this ain't gonna work for me. There's nobody coming in. I'm not gonna hit my target. Okay, I know what I'll do. I'll lower my target. That's the devil doing that, man. That's a criminal. Never ever, if you're taking notes, never lower a target. Never lower a target. Never lower a target. Your mom and dad would tell you to lower a target. A manager might tell you to lower a target. Be reasonable. Be reasonable with yourself. Just bring it down a little bit. No, man. Criminal products are created like that. A guy sees the girl that he wants. That's the girl. She says no. He goes to another girl. Right? Gave up on his dream. If you're going to give up on your own dream, how are you going to build an organization? You will never, ever experience great change in your life unless you're willing to give up something that you have right now. Every single time in my life, I have had to give up something I wanted. So, and I'm not talking about getting rid of the bad stuff. You got to get rid of something that you actually worked for to get. Might have been the house. It might have been, oh, my kids are in the best schools now. It's going to be something painful for you to get to the next place. You have to give up something that you worked for really, really hard. So I sold my house. One day I had this cognition. Hey, to get what you want, you have to give up what you have. That has been true for me throughout my entire life. I had to leave Lake Charles, Louisiana. Went, went to Houston, had to leave Houston once I got comfortable with my community and my friends. Had to leave San Diego, had to go to LA. LA is a pit compared to La Jolla. Nobody goes from La Jolla, California up to Los Angeles. Nobody does that. You'll leave Kansas City to go to Los Angeles because you want to be an actor. I met Elena within five minutes of arriving in LA. I sold my house, I sold my house. I didn't leave it vacant as a backup plan. I left this house, okay? Like I couldn't buy this house today if I wanted to. It was so, like it was a precious little treasure. I had to give that up. By the way, I had to give up being the mayor of my little town. Everybody knew me. There wasn't a restaurant I couldn't walk into. I could always get a seat. I could always get the best seat. I had it right in my hand. This is what I'm telling you guys. You have to be willing to give something up and the moment you do, you better have your partner on your side. Whoever's in your life, mom, whoever's the big influence, that significant other person in your life that you're gonna consult, that everybody's gonna consult. Every one of you are gonna, hey, what do you think, should I? You better have that person on your side. In my case, I was by myself. So my consultant was like, you gonna do this, dog? I called my buddy, Dale. Dale, you think I should? He's like, you're miserable, bro. You got everything you want and you're miserable. He's like, what, what do you have to risk? Sold the house went to Los Angeles, lived in a hotel. I went from a, a house on the ocean to living in a hotel. Uh, the hotel room was probably like, I don't know, maybe the size of the stage. So please, please do whatever you got to do this weekend to figure out whatever you got to do to get rid of whatever is holding you back, most of which is something you worked hard to get. Okay, maybe before the weekend's over, you could write down two or three or four things you worked really hard to get that you think you're supposed to keep. You got them already. You got it. You already did that. You don't have to keep it. The problem was I was not, I do what a lot of entrepreneurs do. The mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make is, number one, they never look up the definition entrepreneur. An entrepreneur means someone is who organizes a business or businesses and invests money 
takes greater than normal risk with money in order to expand or organize those businesses. I wasn't spending money on my business. Like all I was doing was knocking on doors. It was just pure effort. I wasn't spending money. Like I wouldn't spend real money until I was uh, 50, 50 years old, about 10 years ago, when, it, when a guy said, bro, you're not a business. And I said, what? He, and, I, and I could feel this. Yeah, I was a hustler. I was a grinder. But I wasn't a business. And I, and I could feel it, you know. Um, yeah, I was a consultant. I, could, I, I was making some money, like in, in my 30s and 40s. I made, you know, I made a lot of money. What, what other people would call a lot of money. Yeah. But I was not a business. You know what I mean? I was just. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I was just hustling. Transaction. Just because you're hustling. I was, everything yeah. was a transaction. Yeah. Everything, everything was a transaction to get money, pay the taxes, have a little bit of money left over. Everything was in a transaction. Yeah. And, um, and this guy's like, well, you know, you're not a business. And I was like, I know, man, I know. Don't tell anybody. I know that, okay? <laughs> like, I knew it. And because, because to me, a business is I can walk away from it, it'll still operate. I was, I was a guy. I was no different than when I was 30, just pounding doors. And which was good, which was good, and I think a lot of people need to, you don't need to skip that spot either. Because once I put the two together, okay, I can pound the door, I can learn e-commerce, um, I, can be, I can be a one product sale, I can sell it to companies. Like today, we'll sell, we'll sell a product to a company for 80 grand on a, on a three to five year contract, 80 grand a year. Yeah, wow. And I'll switch immediately and sell an $8 product online, or I'll give something away for free to speaking to 4,000 people today in hopes that I can meet, you know, maybe 40 of them that I can do, have a partnership and a collaboration with in, in the future. This is the taboo thing to say. It's never going to be on TV. Nobody likes, you got to have money. Nobody's, nobody will ever says this. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do this, I do that. I have, blah, blah, blah. dude, you got to have money. You can't, you can't, you know, what, what do I mean by that? Like, okay, well, like create the life you want. Yeah. Quit saving money. You know, quit buying watches and H belts. Like I don't have an Hermes belt. Like I didn't even know how to pronounce Hermes. I'm like, well, who would spend <laughs> seven, eight hundred bucks on a belt? Like, yeah. like I could buy three thousand dollars worth of real estate with a seven hundred dollar belt, right? And who am I trying to impress anyway? What I need is I need a trainer to come to me. So you buy your Hermes belt. I'm gonna buy a trainer to come to me. I don't want to go to him. Okay, I don't. Time is money. It's not money a time. It's time is money. So uh, why am I going to get in a car and drive to, 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 to the trainer? Here, you, I'll give you another 200 bucks. You come to me. Okay, you come to me. I walk down there. I do my workout. Boom, I'm done. Well, he's, he's still driving 40 minutes, I, he's, and I'm already taking a shower and, and, and doing a business deal. So you got to figure out the things in your life. You know, when I, when I, when I went from Okay, I'm never going to do, I'm never going to work for below my pay grade anymore. Like, this was a big shift for me. Like, I like gardening. I like landscape stuff, right? When I got rid of a yard, I was like, that, was, that, that probably made me 10 million bucks. I loved it. I spent too much time doing it. It was costing me money. It was below my pay grade. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, what am I doing? What am I doing, like, Oh, because it's therapeutic. Well, good, man. Like, like not two hours of it. It's, it therapeutic's costing you millions of dollars because you're out there playing with stuff. That made me feel good and everything, but there's got to be a faster, better way to do that, to get that sensation. You know, this concept of time management has been pushed off on me my entire life. And I have never, ever agreed with it. I'm like, why would I want to manage time? Why would I, what am, what am I going to do? How, do? how do you manage time? What do I do? I like, okay, I'm going to watch these seconds. Dude, I don't want to manage time. I want to produce. I want to be highly productive. I want to squeeze time. I literally want to take time and I want to turn 60 minutes into three hours of production. That's the different think that you need today, not manage time. Now, there are some tricks when managing time, if that's where you want to come from, like Alan Greenspan. Alan Greenspan and his roommate in college, his roommate's father taught Alan Greenspan a little trick that Alan Greenspan used his whole life. And it was to break up the day into 15 minute blocks. 15 minutes, I have something, and then fill up the next 15 minutes. Now the reason Alan did that, and I like that concept a lot, is because he didn't want white space on that calendar. He knew white space was a problem because 
white space, nothing in the 15 minutes is a waste of time. See, before you start thinking about just managing time, first I want you to do this. Number one, I want you to make a list of things that you're doing every day that is a waste of time. That is the way you create time, not manage it. The first thing I want to do is look at things that I'm doing that are wasteful, those two or three hours a day that are wasteful moments. Things I'm doing on Facebook that just are a waste of time, or maybe a game I'm playing that's a waste of time, or maybe a newspaper I'm reading where I'm not really learning anything, I'm reading about the, the celebrities. It's a waste of time. Okay, second thing I want you to do is this. I want you to then start thinking about these 15 minute blocks and filling that calendar up. But the third and most important thing I want you to think about is how can you create time? How can you literally take 24 hours and, and pack more into it so that you can become more productive, so that you can use that urgency concept and really blow up your, your career, blow up your life, make the most incredible life for your family, for you, for the kids, for your wife, for your husband, and for your clients so that you can take care of yourself materially as well. 12 years ago, we had done maybe, I don't know, $20 million over the internet. We'd done over a billion dollars in sales over the internet in the last 12 years, okay? Thank you. Like you guys gotta learn how to use enthusiasm. Like when you use it, use it. Like the more you use, the more you get. You're like, I'm gonna save my energy now. I don't wanna give him too big a hand too early. It's really early today, come on. Look man, when somebody's successful, you ought to throw it out. That's what I'm talking about. See, you guys, you guys gotta, y'all gotta, y'all gotta quit trying little tricks and gimmicks. Like if you gotta walk on fire to get excited, you are cramped up. Like, like if you can't at will, whenever you want to, for any reason, just get excited, then you got a problem, okay? Because in, real, in the real world, you can't, you can't be in the middle of a meeting and I'm trying to get her to give me like $100 million and I'm, not, I'm feeling a little depressed or bad right now or I got my attention on my kids and, I, and I'm like, okay. Everybody's gonna be like, nah, we were gonna give you the 100 until you started pumping your chest. Right? You can't say, hang on a second, man. I got to go into a state change. Like, that's not real. You guys understand? You have to be able to, that's a gimmick. And gimmicks take time, okay? And gimmicks cannot be duplicated. What can be duplicated are disciplines. And that's what you're gonna be, we're going to be sharing with you over the next three days. Disciplines can be duplicated. If you've seen my children, okay? If you've, how many of you have seen Sabrina and Scarlett? Oh, yeah. Those are disciplines, okay? If they were in here right now, they could get on that stage and talk to you. They know how to look you in the eyes. They know how to shake your hand because they have been taught how to communicate. We spend less time on teaching them how to count than we do communicate, connect with people, okay? We have them homeschooled. The homeschool teacher, what do you want them to learn? You just keep teaching them what I'm teaching them. You teach them confidence. You teach them poise. You teach them the ability to communicate. Be dangerous, not careful, okay? We teach our kids how to be dangerous. I, I teach my kids how to meet strangers and greet strangers. We teach our kids that strangers have everything they want and strangers are not dangerous, okay? Is there danger in the society? Yeah, that's what those guys are for over there. So I'm gonna put my kids in an environment where they can meet 99% of the people and feel safe to meet them, talk to them, communicate with them. So I wanna make sure that my kids can walk into an environment and have zero concern about him, her, or him. And they can walk out and say, hey, I wanna meet you because strangers have everything that you want. The people you don't know and haven't met. These guys, these guys dressed in their robes. What do you call the robes? The condor, okay? I have one in my closet, by the way. I love the condor. I put the condor on one time and I was like, I'm a bad, bad man. <laughs> Dude, I felt so freaking powerful, it was amazing, okay? I grew a beard, I'm like, now I'm a man, okay? Give me a camel, okay? It was like, it was like phenomenal, right? Like, but but you, you guys need to have that kind of swag everywhere in life. And regardless of how old you are, 25, and you're like, I'm too young to have swag, or 55, and now you're too old, it's not true. You just need to get the confidence, the bravado, not fake it, you don't need to fake it. You need, to, you, need to get, you need to get confidence. If I could get rid of this right here in life, if I could get rid of these downs, man, how confident would I be? I mean, like I'm going into every deal, I'm a win. And that is possible, folks.
okay? But it starts with, who knows me? Because if I'm walking around this planet and nobody knows me, I'm gonna be terrified. One thing that I've done since I was 25 years old is learn how to set goals, put them in place, and then manifest them over periods of time in my lifetime. If you go back and listen to the rules of success that I shot that show in, I think I was 35 years old, 36 years old, in La Jolla, California. I was living on the ocean then, and you can go back to that. You can look in the 10X rule. When I wrote the 10X rule, I shared a bunch of goals. That was 11 years ago. You can see over the last 25 years, every single goal that I have set for myself, up to this point anyway, I have been able to achieve. My wife, my two beautiful kids, the condition that my body's in today, my finances, the real estate, all of it started with goals. All of it started with the idea that was in my mind and had not yet been manifested in reality. I heard a saying once, uh, Barbara Streisand said that there was not one thing in her career that she had accomplished. Tips on writing goals. Number one, write them down every day. In fact, what I do is I write mine down on a blank sheet of paper. I write them down in the AM. I write them down in the PM. And I also write them down anytime I'm disappointed or discouraged. Okay, so I could actually write my goals down more than twice a day. Always in the AM, always in the PM. First thing I do in the morning, first thing I did today was I wrote my goals down. Second thing, what I'll do before I go to sleep tonight is write my goals down. It could be on the same legal pad. Second thing, I write them down in present tense, in PT. Present tense or even past tense or past, okay? So I may write it as though I have accomplished it. What you don't want to do is uh, write it down, one day I will love my job. Okay, you wanna write down, I love my job. Even if you hate your job right now, just like flip it, I love my job, okay? I love my wife and kids. I didn't have a wife and kids. Uh, my kids love me, I didn't have any children, okay? I wrote it down as though it was happening, okay? Um, write your goals down whether or not you're achieving them or not. It doesn't matter that you're achieving them, okay? This is gonna sound a bit like you're deceiving yourself which is what you're doing. You're, you're writing down the future as though it's happening today and or has happened. Number four, strongly suggest that you go 10 times bigger on your goals than you think what is accomplishable, okay? I say go big or go bigger, baby. Okay, go big or go bigger. There is nothing wrong with big think. It doesn't cost anything, okay? You can't get taxed for thinking big. And it's not just, okay, I'm going to dream big and big things are going to happen, okay? I am going to p p uh, write down, hey, I'm trying to achieve X in my life. I'm trying to go from here to 10 times bigger than I can think, okay? During the day, I'm going to take the actions that support that when I write this down every day. Number five, do not be disappointed in not achieving. Just keep writing, just because you're not hitting it, just keep writing it. Uh, I wrote down, off and on, from time to time, I wrote down for years. Saving money in a bank account is ridiculous. The only people that benefit yeah. is the bank. So wait, yeah. what do you do with the money then? You, 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 you use money. First thing people should invest in is themselves. Like, you, you know. Best thing is people hear that and they go, what does that mean though? What do I do with the money? Go to, go to workshops, go to seminars, go to whatever you're good at, whatever you're doing. You're yeah. an astronaut, invest in yourself. If you're an athlete, invest in yourself. Don't spend money on belts. Yeah. And looking good. Like invest in your craft. You're a comedian, invest in your craft. And that means investing in your skills, a uh, 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 coach, uh, uh, what, whatever, whatever, podcasts, yeah. whatever needs to get you known, right? And, right. Then, and then also in, in your branding and your marketing. Like people have to know you, no matter how good you are. If I don't know you, it doesn't matter. Right, so you got to get out there. Yeah, how did, you, how did you guys run into me? How did I run into you? Yeah, how did you find out about me? Instagram. Good. I invested a lot of money making sure that people see that Instagram account, right? Right. So, or energy, money and energy. Right. So uh, invest in yourself first to become great at whatever you're doing. Number two, start investing in your business if, that, if you hadn't done that already. And the third thing is start investing in things that will pay you every month. 
So you buy, you buy a flow of income. This idea that it takes money to make money is not true. It's a myth. It's, it's, it's the number one reason why I did the show, the Discovery mm. Show, to debunk that on TV, that I didn't need any money at all. Uh, they, they offered me a hundred bucks. I'm like, just keep it, dude. Like, no, no, we got to give it to you. It's part of the show. And I'm like, I don't need the hundred. They're like, no, but you got to take the hundred. It's part of the show. So the entire 90 days, I never touched the first hundred they gave me. And this was to prove to people, dude, you do not need money. Like, it's just, it's not true. You need money. You do need contacts. You need people. You need relationships. You need people. You need, people. You need the right people, though. The right people that are already in play. Okay, just because a guy's got money. I remember a, a, a billionaire friend of mine, uh, you know, he could buy a jet. And I said, hey, Bob, should I buy a jet? He said, you should, I shouldn't. Meaning Grant should because, and he's way wealthier than I am. He could have bought 40 of them. He's like, I don't have a place to go in mine. You, have a, you could use yours every day. So you, mm. you got to find somebody that's in place, somebody that not just has money, but somebody that wants to do more with their money. So you'll notice in the first uh, 10 days, I don't spend a hun- any money. I don't spend money on shelter, not on food, and not on water. Nothing. Then what I do is I end up accumulating assets. And it's unfortunate that the viewer doesn't see this. Within mm. five days, I have two vehicles. One was given to me by Discovery, <laughs> and the other one was a $40,000 Jeep that I basically used uh, from Ryan, this guy I met, and told him, I'm going to sell your Jeep. I'm going to drive it around town and put 10 miles a day on it, and I'm going to sell it. Well, that's a $43,000 asset. Uh, my truck was worth four grand. I still had my $100. I lived in a $46,000 RV that I was trying to sell. So, yeah. uh, and the, what, what's the other thing I did? And I picked up $10,000 to do in a 15% partnership in the equity of the upside of this guy's company. So literally in 10 days, wow. I was accumulating contacts that could get me equity. And the, and the part, part of that story is, man, go get you some equity. You know, Jay-Z talks about this. You're getting, you, you know, so many of you young brothers are getting an advance while I'm picking up the equity. Last thing I'm going to tell you is this, okay? Don't get stuck in mechanics. When I'm writing my goals down, I do not know how I'm going to do it. So I merely sit down. Like I I remember for years I would write down, I own a helicopter. I don't even know where this concept came from. I own a helicopter. I own a helicopter. I own a helicopter. Every once in a while it would show up. It would show up on a Wednesday and not show up for uh, when I'm writing my goals down, right? So I'm waking up in the morning. I wake up in the morning and I write my goals down. And one day I write, I own a helicopter. I think back then it was, uh, I, I learned how to fly a helicopter. Okay? It was stupid. It was completely ridiculous. I'm like, where did that come from? It just kind of floated into my mind. I wrote it down. Okay, I own a jet. I'm like, man, I'm just being stupid right now. I own a jet and two helicopters. I don't know how that happened. I didn't, I didn't know anything about jets. Uh, I would not achieve any of this, by the way, until I was 53 years old, 54 years old. First private jet I was ever on was the one uh, uh, we bought. I, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how they fly. I didn't know how they work. I didn't know what the cost of a hangar was. I know nothing. Don't get lost in the mechanics. I didn't know the fuel cost. I didn't know what it cost to buy one. Do you finance them? Do you pay cash? Do you get a tax rate? I knew nothing when I started writing this down. The helicopter would come after the jet. Okay, I bought a helicopter. I didn't know why. So the point of that story is, when you're writing your goals down, literally sit down with a blank sheet of paper, first thing you wake up in the morning, and you just start zip, 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 zip. You write through them. Like this morning I wrote down, 40 billion in real estate, okay, public. I write down one word, I'm going public. See, I know now that this this is in present tense and or past tense. I write it in present or past tense. I'm going public, okay. I wrote down recently, a congressional hearing. People are like, what, what's a congressional hearing? Dude, I'm so big now, they called me into Congress. I'm a, they're going to have a congressional hearing. They're going to drill me. Okay. Oh, yeah, then I wrote this down. Uh, a political office. Now, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm writing that down. I don't know how to achieve that. I don't know what it would mean. I don't know what it looks like. I don't get stuck in the mechanics. Don't worry about it.
Commit first. Commit first, man. Just keep committing it. Keep fueling it. Keep writing it down. Eight billion people know my name. How'd you get started? Like, what was your first company? What did it look like? How, how did all that happen? My first company was working for somebody else. You know, like until, uh, it wasn't until I figured out how to make somebody else rich that I could be, be rich. Like, I hear a lot of guys saying, oh, I don't, I don't want to work for somebody else. I don't want to keep making other people. When I became successful in another company and then left that company and went and worked for another company and made them super successful to the point to where these companies were literally dependent upon me. Like that, that, that's the thing, that's the muscle and the grit, persistence and fortitude are like, you know what, I don't, my ego wasn't like, I need my name on it, but my ego was strong enough to say, I want to be the best in the company. Like, I want to make this company dependent upon me. The first company, the first real job I had was my sixth job. I was fired from my first five. Fired from my sixth job six times, but wouldn't leave the last one. I just would not leave. So literally, like, I'd wreck stuff. I, I, I have a, t a terrible driving record, and I, and I was in the car business. And I'd wreck their cars, and, and they'd fire me. And I'd say, okay, okay, okay. And then before I would leave, I would go sell something, and then they would keep me on. If, if selling something was always forgiveness. So um, when I finally left that company, they went under. Like, they could my production was so high that one person leaving, the entire company failed. Went to my next job, which was speaking, consulting, using my sales um, philosophies and gifts, if you will. Uh, and we would go around companies and teach them. And I worked for him for 20 months. I was like the top guy in his company. Now, the, the reason I'm saying that is that was a job for me and that was a business. I treated that little, my little department like this is my company within a company. And, and I wanted to make that company as strong as possible so that when I, made, when I finally went out on my own, which I was forced to go out on my own, I, I didn't want to go out on my own. I went out on my own just because there was just no opportunity left. And there, there was no way for me to score where I was, which I, I still remember today. It's important to get good people to keep them, that like you gotta give them some other pond to, to, to swim in. And so when I started my first company, uh, I guess I was 29, um, that was a company where I was cold calling on businesses around the US and Canada. Three, the third thing the super successful do is they master income creation. I was asked this morning, I left my home at four o'clock in the morning, I was on a plane at five, okay? And a guy asked me, he's like, dude, why are you still cranking so hard? Because I don't have any money. I'm always broke. I reinvest all the money. Every time I get any money sitting in accounts, I take it and invest it in hard assets. Illiquid assets. Illiquid so that I cannot get that money. That's what keeps me motivated, folks. I get money, liquid money. If it's not used, what? It's useless. Take it and I buy a hard asset that produces income. I'm broke. I gotta go hustle again. Here, I wanna share with you the uh, not so secret way that thousands, tens of thousands, actually millions of people are becoming millionaires in America today. They invest in assets that appreciate over time. They invest in assets, in IPs that they control, royalties they control, things that they know over time will increase in value that there's a 99.9% 99, 99 .9 chance that they're gonna increase in value, and that's what they invest in. They don't make little bets, they make big bets, and they invest in things that they know will go up in value over time. That could be a sports team. Uh, chances you buying a sports team are next to none, same for me. So you gotta start thinking about, okay, what assets can I do that with, okay? Oh wow, I'm gonna go create, I'm gonna go create the next big thing. I'm gonna create an app, and. Hundreds of millions of people are going to download my app. Okay, chances of you doing that are, uh, your, your chances are bigger than mine because I'm not even trying. There are assets out there today that are in your backyard. They're in your neighborhood. You don't have to buy a sports team. You don't need to be connected. You don't have to have a, you don't have to know how to write code or do tech. It's sitting there waiting for you right now. And it's one of the ways that I created the wealth that I have in my life. I have, we have 11 businesses today. Uh, and, and then we have a real estate 
portfolio of 12,000 units, going to 40,000 units, and uh, about $4 billion worth of real estate. Now, the first, the 11 businesses that I own, man, they were so hard to create them, start them, manage them, guide them, hire people for them, advertise, market, get them known, like to organize it. We have hundreds and hundreds of employees in these companies, uh, about 700 employees across these companies, most of which are startups. They're brand new. They don't have a lot of employees. A lot of risk, a lot of downside, a lot of problems, a lot of headaches, a lot of people. The real estate, almost no headaches. Compared to the value of the portfolio, very few people work at it. It appreciates in value over long periods of time, and that's what wealthy people do. They invest in assets. Real estate is one of the things they love. The first three years I was in business, I made $30,000 a year. Three years, first three years. The, first, the, 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 the last year I left somebody, I was making 150, 160 grand a year. The first maybe 27 months that I was in business, I made less than 30,000 a year. I went backwards. But the, the, the problem was I was not, I do what a lot of entrepreneurs do. The mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make is, number one, they never look up the definition entrepreneur. An entrepreneur means someone is who organizes a business or businesses and invests money, takes greater than normal risk with money in order to expand or organize those businesses. I wasn't spending money on my business. Like all I was doing was knocking on doors. It was just pure effort. I wasn't spending money. Like I wouldn't spend real money until I was uh, 50, 50 years old about 10 years ago, when, it, when a guy said, bro, you're not a business. And I said, what? He, and, I, and I could feel this. Yeah, I was a hustler, I was a grinder, but I wasn't a business, and I, and I could feel it, you know? Um, yeah, I was a consultant, I, could, I, I was making some money, like in, in my 30s and 40s, I made, you know, I made a lot of money, what, what other people would call a lot of money. Yeah. But I was not a business, you know what I mean? I was just. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I was just hustling. Just because you're hustling, I was everything yeah. was a transaction. Yeah, everything everything was a transaction to get money, pay the taxes, have a little bit of money left over. Everything was a transaction. Yeah, and um, and this guy's like, well, you know, you're not a business. And I was like, I know, man, I know. Don't tell anybody. I know that. Okay, <laughs> like I knew it. And because because to me, a business is I can walk away from it; it'll still operate. I was I was a guy. I was no different than when I was thirty, just pounding doors. And which was good, which was good, and I think a lot of people, need to, you don't need to skip that spot either. Because once I put the two together, okay, I can pound the door, I can learn e-commerce, um, I, can be, I can be a one product sale, I can sell it to companies. Like today, we'll sell, we'll sell a product to a company for 80 grand on a, on a three to five year contract, 80 grand a year. Yeah, wow. And I'll switch immediately and sell an $8 product online, or I'll give something away for free to speaking to 4,000 people today in hopes that I can meet, you know, maybe 40 of them that I can do, have a partnership and a collaboration with in, in the future. Invest in assets and cash flow. Give me a drip, let me rip. Give me a little drip. Give me something every month. Give me something every quarter. Give me something to reward me, 3%, 4%. 10%. Give me something to reward me to have a 10x big bang at the end of the appreciation of the asset. Warren Buffett says three rules. Don't lose money. Two, don't remember number one, don't lose money. And number three, only invest in things that cash flow. You know, Warren Buffett, he's got a, he's a major player in uh, at Apple now, and it took him forever to get there. And the reason he finally invested in Apple was because he understood, finally understood the cash flow of the iTunes account. It was crazy, that's when he made his big move. Every company he's ever invested in had positive cash flow. Be a better guy, man, I mean, you yeah. know, just be a good guy and be, be, you know, the thing I'm proud of is I get to be Grant all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm actually getting to the point where I'm like, hey man, I, I finally got to be what I, I finally became what I wanted to be. Mm, what you was know? that? Me. Yeah. You know, that, that I don't have to apologize anymore and that I quit mm. screwing up and I quit having to call people and say, hey man, I, I, I went too far, you know. If I could just pull some of that back without that drug that that, that psychiatrist was trying to use. Right. You know, that if I'm less dependent upon aggression, you know, and I could, I could kind of manifest more, 
you know, like you you talk about. Let it let it flow more. Let yeah, it flow, dude. Yeah. Let it flow. You know, but but if I could get that perfect balance of aggression and flow, <laughs> that's a sweet you know, spot. Yeah, it's sweet, dude. It's hard to find that thing. That's a sweet too. spot. You know, to be that. I don't want to be. I want. I don't want to be the little stream that drips. You know, I want to be like. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to damage anybody. Right. I don't want to hurt anybody. You know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to be in competition anymore. Mm-hmm. But I also don't want to lose the edge. Right. You know. <laughs> it's a dance, it, dude. It's a dance. It's a dance, man. You know. Like like your girl said to me the other night. She's like, she, she said something before she left. She's like, I really get who you are. Mm. You know. That and that hits me mm. when people say that to me. Most people don't get who I am. Mm. That's beautiful. You know. And and she said, I really get who you are. Yeah. And 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 a lot of people don't. Yeah. And and it, sometimes it hurts, right? Because I know who I really am. Yeah. And but I also know the things I'm trying to accomplish for me. You know, like Ryan. Ryan gets who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, Ryan. Ryan never takes me on. Man, you're you're the best, Grant. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> he just he strokes me right right yeah, through yeah. it. And 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 you know, my wife. I can see my wife. She gets t- she gets tired of the 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 pounding. You know. But hey, man, I just you know I'm a right handed hitter. You know, yeah. or I got I got a certain ball that I throw, a yeah. certain shot I make, and yeah. it's my go-to. You know, and when when I get threatened, I'm going to go to that. And I, if I could develop some other set of skills, mm-hmm. you know, that would be that would be a cool thing. The thing is not to just be positive, not even to offer this no negativity policy that I talk about. The way to avoid uh, negative and distracting people, man, is to vibrate at a rate so fast okay, that you're out in front of them. Once I got a speeding ticket, actually here in Miami, and the, and the police officer says, w- w- why are you speeding? Why are you in such a hurry? I'm like, dude, I'm trying to stay away from the crazies, okay? If I can just get ahead of everybody else, I'm not distracted by anybody but guys like you. And your job is to stop me, but the truth is their job is to stop me, distract me, and cause me to turn around and, and, and stop my mission. See, so I got my ticket and moved on and went to the head of the pack again. See, this is what I'm telling you, man. Look, if you want to not be bogged down by negative, distracted people, you need to take responsibility that you're slowing down enough to get caught up by this magnetic charge of distractive and negative people. Do you need to vibrate so fast that these people are distracting other people, not you? Get way ahead of the crowd. Get so busy that nobody's going to jack with you, man, because you're filling up your pipeline. You're full. You're busy. And you don't have this stuff sticking to you. Look, if you got negative people around you, if you got distracted people, and we all do, but if it's causing you to be distracted and negative, dude, you need to vibrate. You need to fill up your pipeline. You need to explode, blow up, get busy. So this isn't happening to you because you're partly responsible. Fill your pipeline up. What are you willing to give up? You guys got to keep assessing the situation and not be not be broad stroke about it and say, oh, I'm not going to be a dilettante or I'm going to be a professional. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to. No, no, but what are you going to give up? There are times, though, again, when I will give up that agreement. See, like one of the things I have on here, being right. You have to give up being right. You know, you can't can't want to be 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 right and be successful. They don't they don't even go together. It's impossible. So again, I'm willing to give up being right. I just gotta don't quit, man. If you don't quit, if you don't quit, you can't fail. It's impossible. Failure becomes impossible for those that don't quit. It's impossible. Just think about it. If I keep moving towards the destination, if I if I'm if I'm going through the alphabet, A B C D E, dude. If you just keep going all the way to Z, you finish the alphabet. Break your leg along the way, somebody cuts your tongue out, you get waterboarded, you get a divorce, you lose your dad, you lose a puppy. If you get the Z, you finish the alphabet, period. And boy, when I heard that, I'm like, God damn, what was I thinking? I was thinking I could fail. I can't fail if I don't quit. So so that means I got to get rid, I got to dump people out of the car though along the way, right? But we had to get rid of a whole bunch of people I, I have to get rid of people. How many people have, been, have gone, Johnny? Hunt, I mean, guys, like if you saw the wreckage, like so many, you don't see it, you know? Or, or, I'm not saying get rid of people. I'm just saying like, 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 what are you willing to give up? Okay, on my list, I've given up a house. I've given up money. I gave up my retirement accounts. I had millions of dollars sitting in retirement accounts. I paid the penalty to get the money. 
because it was a mistake years ago. I got convinced by the banks to build an IRA or a 401k because I was trying to figure out how to exit. Actually, the people that were giving me the advice were telling me to figure out how to exit. You're planning an exit when you're 30, and it's stupid. Think about what you're doing. You're not going to retire until you're 70, and the rich people never worry about their retirement accounts. Warren Buffett has not got a 401k. He's got Coca-Cola. See the difference? See the difference in the think? Okay, so, so like, like you, you guys have to take a look at what you know that is now a liability. What you know to be true that has become a liability for you. And if you just study the middle class of America, study the entire structure of the American economy, you will see you will see where a lot of these liabilities exist that, that are, 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 are core values that you have. Not just for you, but for the entire population of people. And, and like, if you just look at the structure of America, 311 million people, most of them are not doing well. You hear about it every day. So the solution is let's give everybody college. Let's give everybody college. Well, college could be one of the problems. Look, you know, let's make sure everybody gets through high school. Okay. Could be one of the problems, actually, that it takes 12 years to learn how to count. And still no product, really. So anyway, I'm not saying, I'm not worried about try, trying to change all that. I'm just saying you might want to look at how some of that has influenced you. You know, the retirement accounts, the life insurance. How many of you got life insurance? How many of you got some cash value sitting there, some hope? Dude, get the money. Don't wait till you die. You need to unlearn some. You need to unlearn some stuff that mom and daddy and your teacher told you. Your mentor, your last guy, whoever you're listening to, if, if what you have now hadn't got you where you want to go, what you have now in your head might be keeping you from where you want to go. Okay, math and money. Math and money. Math and money. How old are you? I'll be nine and three days. Nine and three days. Okay, yeah. math and money. So I'm going to give you adding, subtracting. You know how to do both of those, right? Yes. And I'm going to do multiplying. Oh, God. Okay, now which of these three are the most important? I think more. When it comes to money. When it comes to money? Let me show you. One plus one. One plus one. Or, or two, two plus one equals what? Three. Okay, good. Two minus one equals? One. One. So we got three, one. Two times three equals what? Wait, that's simple. Um, two times six. three. Yes, okay. So which one of these is the most powerful when it comes to money? I think multiply. Yes, why would that be? Because if you have... If you know how to multiply, right? And yeah. you have a dollar, right? Yeah. And you can you're able to multiply that into two dollars, and they can multiply that two dollars into eighty hundred million thousand dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's we can get there faster, right? Okay, so watch. I'm gonna give you a little I'm gonna give you a little drill here okay. to show you the power of multiplying. Add, add, subtract, subtract, multiply. Multiply. Okay, we're gonna use the same numbers every time. Two okay. plus two. Two plus two, four. Two minus two. Two minus two one. Oh wait, that's zero. <laughs> okay, that's four. Zero. Two plus two is four. Yeah, and then two, two minus, minus two is zero. And two times two. Two times two. It's four. Let's do this. Let's do this. We're gonna do another because we love tens, right? Ten. Okay, we're gonna take the number ten because I have it on my hat. Ten X. Wait, no. Now you have the number ten on your hat. Okay, ten, and we're gonna do ten plus ten. Plus ten. Ten minus ten. Zero. And ten times ten. One hundred. So, so watch, 10 plus 10 is how much? 10 plus 10 is 20. 20. 10 minus 10? Zero. 10 times 10? 100. Now we're using the same numbers, but notice the multiplier, the number gets bigger a lot faster than the other two. Yeah. And so what'd you learn from this exercise? That we need to, that if you multiply. Subtracting doesn't help you. Subtract, no, you gotta just get it. Okay, no no subtracting. No reason to learn this in school, kids. Subtract. I protest. You know, you know when people subtract stuff, what they're doing is they're like, okay, I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to spend this. I'm going to budget my money. They're using subtracting yeah. to determine how much money they can spend. 
if you add, it's obviously going to be less than multiplying because multiplying, you're timesing the number. So then it's obviously more because like 10 plus 2 is going to be that's 12. 12. But 10 times 2, ten times two is going to be 20. So, then so it's multiplying gonna be happens more. faster. Yeah. You're amazing. Okay? I know. So when it comes to money, you want to add, subtract, or multiply? You want to multiply mainly and then use the other two for pesky things. Like, pesky things. Like stuff that's not needed. You're awesome, buddy. Okay? So now what I have to do is i got to figure out how to go multiply my friends right. and my money, money so I can get Beyonce to come to the 10 okay. Expo. Yes. Friends. friends. You can multiply friends. So rather than adding one friend, you could add 10. Multiply. Now. Multiply my friends, money. multiply my money. Good. Multiply my influence. You know how to spell influence? No, I'm just gonna write it. I N I N F L U E N C E. Influence. Multiply my power. Power. Just <laughs> and and help more people. Because if I can maybe, maybe I can help Beyonce or Dolly Parton or who else? Ad Ad Adriana. Or her name is I don't Ariana think Grande. Ariana, sorry Just Ariana. Just remember her by the ponytail. Okay, maybe Reine Heine can get Ariana. <laughs> you like Reine Heine? No. Okay, all right. So, okay, if I can't get Beyonce okay. and I can't get Adele, can't get Adele and I can't get... I think Jimmy Fallon will do it. I can't get a Ariana. 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 Okay. And I can't get who else did you want? Jimmy. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton and Jimmy. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Who else? Who else? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. This is the list. I can get Kevin. Kevin. You can get Kevin. I okay. believe in Kevin. I already had Kevin. Okay. I know. I want Kevin I'm, again. You want Kevin again? You love Kevin, huh? Kevin's cool. Um, who else? Because he's almost my height. Who else? <laughs> That's I'm funny. sorry, Kevin. Okay. Who else you want? Um. What about The Rock? Yes, The Rock. Okay, what about... Give me Jimmy that. Fallon can bring Ariana Grande. Okay. Um, I either want Beyonce or Adele. Okay, either one or the one. other, not both of them together. I mean, yeah, you can choose. I mean, okay. I'll be perfectly happy with all of them, but... Okay. Um, and then Ariana... Wait, I already said Ariana. Yeah, yeah. And then... Dolly Parton? Dolly Parton, and I'll be happy. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to invite one of those people, or more. Or, or Okay. But, and then Kevin Hart has to be But I need some, huh? And then Kevin Hart has and Kevin Hart, you want Kevin, Kevin Hart again? Yes. Or maybe he has Shorty. Look, look, now we're best friends. Okay. Zac Efron. No, you know who I don't Joe Rogan is? is? I want Zac Efron. Oh, Zac? You want Zac, Zac Efron? Okay. All right, well, you did your math class, so yeah, I'm going to see what Zac I can Efron. do to get one of, or two of these people. Okay. Okay. Because you made it this far in the video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration. If you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. To get some incredible Ed Milet motivation, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. When you get to winning, for me, it's come down to maxing out. And what maxing out means is you do one more at least than you think you're capable of. So when you're done, whatever you're doing, whether it's at the gym, 